You. Good to see you again. It's good to see you, too. It's been a long time. Oh, yeah, about six weeks. You have a nice time at home? Oh, yeah, great, great. I I didn't do anything but eat Ma's cooking and sit around. Never looked at a steer except in the shop window. How about yourself? Oh, the same. When Mr. Favors' letter comes saying to meet at Rio Salado, I almost write, this time, no Jesus. I don't leave home for anything. Oh, me, too. <laughs> Person had to be soft in the head to go back on a drive after that last one. Eating dust on the chisholm. Did you really have a good time when you were home? Hey, uh, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did it first. And then after a while, it was rowdy, do this, and rowdy, do that. And ain't you ever gonna get out of bed, rowdy? See, it was the same for me and all my little cousins and sisters. Uh, there was never a minute's peace. I'll be glad to get out on the trail. I'm glad I ain't the only one that's <laughs> Another one of those posters. See, I have seen them everywhere. He doesn't look much like a bandito, you think? No, not much. Kind of a handsome fellow. You must want him pretty bad. Five thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. Oh, see, it's mucho dinero. Mucho dinero is right. That's a lot of slugs. What we couldn't do with money like that, huh, Jesus? Seguro, it is a fortune. Well, maybe I'll just collect. Get myself a bandit. Drop a gun, senor. Well, there isn't the handsome bandit himself. Gracias. I suppose you hand over the dinero, eh? Not you, the other. Look, you got the wrong man, mister. I'm about as flat as a person can be. I spent all but my last two dollars back in Laredo, picking up grub. A sad story. Do you expect me to believe you're just wandering through the country penniless? Uh, no, we're on our way to Rio Salada to meet our crew. We're drovers. Both of you? Compadres? Si, sí, senor. That's right. Registrenos. Sad story, it is true, senor. I don't care about the money, but uh, that watch don't mean nothing to you. And does it mean much to you? Well, my old man gave it to me. Daniel Yates. Is that your name? It's my old man's name. My name's Roddy. And you? Jesus Patines. De donde? Banderas. You should choose better compañeros. He is my friend. You believe that? Of course. He's proved it many times. You're a fool. You should pick better friends with more money. It is I who should donate to you. Here. Eat, drink, and be merry at the expense of Antonio Marcos. At least take the horses, Antonio. Andale. What 
fella, isn't he? Very strange Van Deel. Well, I want to thank you, Jesus. Okay. Well, he would have plugged me for sure if you hadn't said I was your friend. Well, that's true. You already forgot all the times you cussed me out? No, oh, no, I'm better than ever. I've been practicing. <laughs> Not bad. Why don't you take your horses around back, go in and have a bath, anything you want. In here? Yeah, sure, it's all taken care of, all paid for. All paid for? Well, how about that? You too, Jesus. Gracias, senor. Oh, I'll be over at the Monterey Saloon, seeing the fellow who's heard we're contracting. You two get cleaned up, you come on over. Right, we'll do that. And by the way, I'm glad you both decided to sign on. You thought we wouldn't? Well, it's time is different. You never know who in this outfit's going to come back or not. Well, who showed so far? Uh, Collins, but he's still drunk from Sedalia. Teddy, a couple others. What about Pete and Mushy and Wishbone and Jim all? Quinch, Joe Scarlett? Have to wait and see. It's muy hombre. Yeah, a little pig-headed at times. Well, who can't be? Mr. Favor? Oh, Collins. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Dan. Dan, this is the boss. I'm the best boss a man ever had. All right, Dan. If I was a drover, I might take that as a recommendation and sign on with you. Only I ain't a drover. What line of work are you in, Dan? Well, I guess you might say right now it's drinking. <laughs> that does explain why you and Collins are such good friends. Pal, that's what we are, ain't we, Dan? Pal. Sure enough! <laughs> Mr. Andrews. Oh, Mr. Favor, good to see you, good to see you. Sit down, sit down. Thank you. Don Andres Marcos, Mr. Gail Favor. Glad to know you, sir. I am honored to meet you, senor. And welcome to our town of Rio Salado. If I can be of service. Oh, thank you, but I doubt if we'll be here that long. I hope our troubles will not inconvenience you. Troubles? Don Andres means this business about the bandits. Oh, yes. Well, I don't think that has anything to do with our business. Which is why you are here. So I will excuse myself and leave you to it. <laughs> Don Benito, gracias for the drink. My pleasure, Don Andres. Adios, senor. Sir? <laughs> Didn't know there were any like him left around. There aren't many. He's one of the last of the old Dons. Hey, doesn't, doesn't the name Marcos mean anything to you? Marcos? Oh, the poster is uh, the bandido? Yes, Don Andre's oldest son, sign of the family. It's a tragedy, Mr. Favor. Yes, it's a small tragedy, but large enough in a little place like this. It's an old story, bad boy from a good family. Not for the same reasons, and not quite in the same way. No? Antonio Marcos doesn't call himself a bandito. He calls himself a revolutionary. He's leading a revolt against the Texas land grant. Oh, isn't it a little bit late for that? It's a lost cause. But he can do a lot of damage. Matter of fact, already has. Robbery, even murder. Three men have been killed already. You said he had reasons. He does. Certain unscrupulous ranchers, outsiders, all of them, took advantage of the law and legally stole his father's lands. Left the family almost penniless. Killed Antonio's mother. You boys sure didn't seem penniless. No, they're proud people, Mr. Favor. Fine people. Some of the finest I've ever known are right around here. Hmm. Well, about the herd. Yes, I was coming to that. Mr. Favor, there's been a delay in getting the cattle together because of this trouble. My vaqueros spend most of their time right here in town, getting ready to fight if they have to. It's that bad? Ugly situation. Tiniest thing could set off a little civil war. There's suspicion everywhere and there's talk. Well, when my men get here, we'll gather up the herd ourselves, then. Good, good. When'll that be? Well, I told them today, but they're coming in from all over. And you never can tell who will show up or when. Oh, we might as well start tomorrow morning with what we have. All right, anything you say. I must warn you, be very careful, Mr. Favor. Outsiders are not trusted in Rio Salado, so keep your men well in hand. Don't let them get mixed up in this. Oh, because of this one fellow? Yes, he's become a sort of a symbol to both sides. 
I don't know what's going to happen when they finally get him. you're doing with those masks on your faces? I'm trying to keep from breathing all the alkali dust you got around here. What do you think? Well, do you have to get in trouble before we even get started? How'd I know he was going to be so touchy? Oh, I'm glad to see you anyway. Both of you. Good to see you too, Mr. Favor. Yeah, well, I had a better job all lined up, but I figured you'd have a hard time getting any other sane man to cook for you, so, well, for the good of the men, I decided to come along. You're hired. Teddy will show you the hotel and where the stable is. And then, where the saloon is. Yippee! Let's go, Mr. Let's go, Boone! <laughs> <laughs> You come on and have another little drink. I don't mind if I do, old horse. This trial's dry. <laughs> Looks like there's gonna be some celebrating around here tonight. Make mine dry. <laughs> hey, who do you think you're shoving? I'm sorry, senor. Senor. What are you doing in here anyway? This joint's not for you. Now, just a minute, old pal. This is my friend, Jesus. How do you know he ain't one of Marcos' men? I don't drink with banditos. And maybe you're the one that won't be drinking, mister. You hear me? Oh, get just out! A minute, just a minute! You here. take his part, you'll get the same as him! Why, you bearded old goat, I'll tear you apart! You think of someone else. Rowdy. Boy. This is kind of a surprise, ain't it? Now, now wait a minute, Yates. His name is Yates, too. Yeah, he's my pa. Rowdy, you told us your pa was dead. He still is. Wait a minute, boy! Come here! Rowdy, I want to... I got I nothing talk. to say to you. Well, look, let's, let's go to that blacksmith shop across the street. There are things to be said after all those years. Why the blacksmith's shop? Well, I, I bunked there. Once I ran it. Look, boy, the same blood flows in both our veins no matter what I've done. Come on. Rowdy, boy, is there anything to say about your paw? You wished I was dead? Why not? It's true. What did you expect me to say? Well, I know I ran out on you and your ma. I admit it. It's been a long time, Dan. I'm surprised you recognize me. Or me, you, for that matter. Oh, you've grown some, but I'd know you anyway. You're my boy. You really care about that, don't you? Maybe more than it seems. Why'd you run out on Ma? Well, that ain't an easy thing to explain, boy, but ever since them early days, even before, I never could set long at a spell just the way I'm built. As yeah. long as she'd go along with me, everything was fine, but then they wish you and school. Oh, and it was my fault, huh? Wasn't nobody's fault. She just had to stay and I just had to go. Don't you ever get that itch in you to get out and see something new, do something new, even if it's only to... Ride out over that far hill just to see what's beyond. Hear the wind in different trees to sit by a lonely campfire and listen to the wolves about and know you're your own man. Ain't you never had that? Yeah, I guess maybe I have. I'm glad to hear you say that, boy. Not for me, for you. It means you're a man. You got the stuff. That's no excuse for not ever coming back. Well, I was going. I meant to all along, but 
How could I come back empty-handed? I was always looking for that steak to set us up real good. We never wanted anything. Just you. But it was for you I'd done it. A ranch. Like we always used to talk about. You remember? Yeah, I remember. Ma and you and me on a place of our own. Where a man could be himself and not beholden anyone or have to work for hire. That's what I wanted. I never got that steak. I never had a real chance till now. Think you could go back now, Dan? Why not? You and me could run that ranch now. You're a man now. All we need is a little steak. Say, 5,000. Oh, come on, quit dreaming, will you? There's no 5,000, and there's not likely to be. Now, Dan, you're gonna go on drifting and catching drinks off drovers like me and getting in brawls and scrapes and working as little as you absolutely have to for the rest of your life. And I hope nothing more. Yes. And then what? Someday somebody plugs me or a horse kicks me or the old ticker just stops and that's the end of me. I may not have much time left, boy. I'd like to spend it with loved ones. And you ain't got any loved ones. You mean that she don't? You don't? Feel nothing for me. Yeah, I guess we do, in spite of everything. Well, it's the same with me. Maybe I could make it up to you. Wouldn't it make it up to you if I was to get you that little ranch? Quit dreaming. You can't go back now. It's too late for that. Oh, wait. You saw her on account of that friend of yours? That's right, I am. Well, you can't hold that against me, boy. I fought in the War of 46, remember? You used to play with the buttons off my uniform. I fought with old Sam Houston in San Jacinto. I had a brother died at Meyer. Died when they shot every tenth man just to show they could. Look, that war's been over a long time. That's no excuse to start another one here. All right, boy, anything you say, just don't get sore at me. Maybe, maybe we could team up, do things together, us two, huh? I'm... I'm moving north with a herd. I won't be back here till fall. I see. Well, maybe I'll move you up to see your mother. I might be able to help a little around the place. Yes, yeah, she'll probably just take you back, too. In spite of her tears and vows. But you'd only disappoint her again. Now you better stay away from her. Oh, now, boy! I want to tell you about this thing. Don't be bothered by it. He wasn't always the kind of man he looked like today. Yeah, sure. He's lived kind of a rough, hard life. He was quite a man once. All those stories, they, they weren't lies. At least I don't think they were. That better. You know, when, when I was a kid, I used to really worship him. All the kids around did. He taught us how to hunt and fish defend ourselves. I owe him a lot. You paid him back in full. How's that? Like grown into a man? Uh, then he went away and left Ma and me. I get to hating him for that. I guess for what he did to Ma. I don't know. Maybe it was for leaving me alone. Maybe I'm being selfish about the whole thing. What do you think I ought to do? Makes you think you should do anything, or even that you can. Well, I can't just ride off and leave him here alone. Well, he did it to you. Look, he's gotten along all these years without you. No reason he can't do it now. So forget it. But 
You've paid him back in full. You don't owe him a thing. It's the other way around. reason for you to be down in the dogs. Don't anybody think anything about that. Thanks. Senor Rowdy, why don't you ask your father to come and have a drink with us? You mean after the way he talked to you? Oh, I don't mind. It was all a kind of mix-up. He's probably a fine fellow, and we would all have fun together, no? Well, thanks, Jesus. I don't even know where he is. and find the sheriff in this dried up town. Don't know. Hey. Huh? Is that the hum that robbed us? Well, that's him, all right. Antonio Marcus. Reward. Five thousand dollars. Just think. We was only about that far from all that money. We was never any farther away from it. We was on the wrong end of them guns. Wait! God! Well, we just met up with these nims here on the poster. You take your horses? Yeah, and everything else, too. We got our saddles, though. Told him we as drovers might lose our jobs without them. Hey, it's a funny thing. He asked about Rowdy and Jesus here. Wanted to know if we knew him. He told him, sure, we was with the same outfit. Then he let us go and gave us our saddles. He a friend of yours? Well, you could say something like that. Well, he appeared like a pretty good old boy, but we better find the sheriff and get our horses back. Afraid it won't do much good. Yeah, we got time for that later. Yeah, I'm hungry enough to eat a dead blasted haunted toad. We got plenty of food and drink. Just remember, you've got to get up early and start rounding up. Come on, let's go. Come on, it ain't anything like my cooking, but we're too tough about it. Howdy, Howdy. 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 I got to talk to you. What do you want, Dan? Can we go somewhere, just for a little, to talk? Rowdy, I know how you feel. I meant it when I said I wanted to make it up to you. Listen, I've been doing a lot of thinking about it. I ain't as young as I was. I don't sit easy by the campfire no more. There's aches in my bones I never had before. Look. Oh, listen, boy, uh, let me say it. I want to come back, Rowdy. You and me running our own place with your mother mind us. That's what I want. I'm sorry, but like I said, it's a little late for that now, Dan. Oh, no, it ain't, boy, because I got something cooking. how to collect that five thousand dollars we need oh i think i know how we can collect that reward money for the bandito you mean antonio marcus how now man how i'll take care of how you say you'll come in with me on it if i get the information we need you just come along and help out it won't take long the way i got it figured and he won't even know what hit him you mean you plan on killing him well, the poster says dead or alive, he's a bandito. Look, I ain't no bounty hunter. Oh, now look, boy. This fella needs taking. Somebody'll do it. Not me. 
You realize how much money that is, more than either one of us have ever seen. You realize what it could do for us? Give us both what we've always wanted. Look, I've never done anything like that, and I ain't about to start now. Not with Antonio Marcus, why, he's no different than I am. You know him? That's right, I know him. He held us up today, me and Jesus. He could have robbed us or killed us, but he didn't. He gave us back everything, even that old watch you gave me. He knows you, knows your name? Yeah, he knows my name. And he saw your name in the watch. You still carry that old watch I gave you? Yeah. Well, now, boy, that's right thoughtful of you. I don't think I'll carry it anymore. I don't much want anything that belongs to you. You can have it back if you want. I'm sorry to hear you say that, boy. But maybe you'd change your mind once you got that money in your hands. I doubt that. Ronnie, give me back that watch I gave you. Goodbye. Just for a little, son. Yes, yeah, it's Marco's place, ain't it? Si, sí, don Marcos, he lives here. Yeah, I want to talk to the old man. It's impossible, he's retiring. I said I want to talk to him. Now you shut up, you hear me? Senor. Senor, what is it you want? I don't suppose you'd tell me where your son Antonio is, would you? No, senor. Even if I knew, I would not tell you. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. So I guess I'll have to manage it another way. No! Please stop! No! Ah! Yeah, well now, why don't you tell that bandito you? about that, huh? Don Andres! My father, my father! Maria! Maria! Don Andres! Tell... Tell Antonio! No, no, I had no, to first. No, no, tell Antonio! Where is this range we're going to be working? Oh, about three miles west of town. Sort of worried about Pete. Where do you suppose he'd be? I sure don't know. Maybe he ain't coming. Oh, you'd think he'd write or something. Still time for him to show up. Probably palpitating over some female somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I should have thought of that. Maybe that's where Murdoch is and some of the others, too. I've left word where to find us. He'll probably be draggling in for three days yet. Well, everybody ready to ride? Yeah, yeah. Senor? Huh? There was a Senor Yates here, no? Yeah, right over there. Senor Yates? Yeah, how are you? I have a message for you from Antonio Marcos. Marcos? He says he will do something about it. He is coming here to kill you, and there is no use trying to escape if he wrote his block. Hey, whoa, whoa, wait up. What did he say? Antonio Marcos is coming here to kill me. We'd like to know what's going on. The Mexican boy just came in with a message for Yates here from Antonio Marcos. Said he was coming in to kill him. Oh, so he knows. He knows what? What happened last night. Your name is Yates? Yeah, that's right. Roddy Yates. That's a surprise. I thought Look, that... what's this all about? Maybe you better ask him. Well, ask me what? What happened to Don Andres Marcus's house last night? You mean to tell me you don't know? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean to tell you. And we can vouch for it. He was with us all last night. Come on. Let's find out about this. No, no, era un hombre viejo. He was a, an, an old one, you know? Yeah, just the one I thought. Looked like a mountain man, beard on his face. The one who started that trouble yesterday. Why did he have a watch with your name in it? This is the same name as his. He's my father. Where is he? 
I don't know. And you had nothing to do with this? Nothing. It seems Antonio Marcus doesn't know that. Maybe too late to stop him. It's up to you to protect him. In this town, with a friend of Antonio's on every corner. All right, then. Get him out of town. With Antonio's men on every road waiting to shoot on sight. And it's going to be up to you to tell Antonio about it. He may not wait to listen. His father in there unconscious may be dying. This whole thing could explode into bloodshed before we have a chance to stop it. I'm partly guilty, too. It's my responsibility. I'll face up to him. What are you talking about? You got nothing to do with his guilt. I might have known Dan was planning something like this. Gotta do it. reception is this? We're just one day late. Yeah, well, maybe you should have waited another day, Pete. Just in time for some lead throwing. Well, what's going on here? Come on inside, Pete. I'll tell you. About swearing in some deputies. I tried that. Everybody's sick or awful busy or something. You can't blame them the way this thing started. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're your deputies now. You don't have to do that. It's none of your affair. You don't owe him nothing. Neither do you. We ain't doing this for him, Roddy. Sheriff. Yes, Ben. I guess you realize how dangerous this situation is. Well, yes, I think I do. If it happened some other way, things might be different. But this cowardly attack on a defenseless old man, a man everybody respected and loved. I know that. Then you must know that if you try to take him, arrest him, or worse, I won't answer for the consequences. What do you expect me to do? Let him ride into town and gun this boy down? If this boy was behind bars where he belonged, there'd be no danger of that. Is that so? Ben, do you expect me to let Antonio ride into town and out again unmolested? It is suicide, John. Worse. Think what it means to the town. With these men behind you, there'll be a war. You owe it to the town, John. I owe it to the town to do the duty I swore I would. That's what I'm going to do. If these are the only men that'll help me, well, that's the way it is. Besides, our man had nothing to do with this thing. What do you mean? This is what I said. He's innocent. Who did it, then? It was another man. It doesn't matter. It matters a lot. It doesn't matter. I'm going to answer for him. It was the boy's father, Ben. Where is he? Gone? We've got to stop Antonio. How? I don't know how, but we've got to stop him. We've got to speak to him first. I'm going to do that. I'll face up to him. Roddy? You, gringo. Marcus, you're under arrest. Look around you, Sheriff. You're not going to intimidate me, Antonio. It is not to intimidate you. It is to ensure that this business, which is personal between this man and me, stays that way. Personal. You can't get away with this. A lot of innocent people will suffer. You talk to me of innocent people. My father was innocent. And so is this man. He didn't touch your father. No. What about this? Somebody else took it. Who? This man had it only yesterday. I saw it. This man did not beat your father. Perhaps you can tell me then who it was. There's no way of proving who it was. Then I have only you. You will have to answer.
I'll answer. Only let's have this just between you and me, not uh, any of the rest of these men, all right? No se meten, segundo. Muy bien, jefe. All right. That is the way it would be. You and me. Sheriff, give me a word. This is going to be a fair fight. You won't hold anybody here for what happens. All right. Anytime you're ready, senor. Nito with a price on my head. He was a murderer, thief, and no good, and needed killing, wasn't he? So what's the harm? You're all green, that's all, envying me this. Well, it's mine, you hear? Mine and Roddy's. We done it, not you. Better start moving. We'll camp out in the range. Get an early start in the morning. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Faber. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Faber. Sorry? Sorry about what? Well, I hate to back out on a business deal, but under the circumstances... You're trying to tell me we, we don't get the hurt? How can I let you take it now, the way these people feel? Now, after what you've done... What about... we've done? We didn't have anything to do with it. Look, you mean to tell me... Just because we were here? Yeah. Just because you were here. These people are always going to feel that you being here brought this whole thing to a head. And we lose our jobs just like that? Sorry, I can't afford to take the chance. A hundred miles from nowhere. These men are out of work. Most of them are out of money. And you're sorry. That's all I can say. I'm sorry, boss. Don't ever say that again. Hey. Hey, you know? It just might be that none of us has to be sorry at all. It could very well work out that it somehow works out for the best. You mean losing the herd? Yeah. I've been thinking that. There's a little Mexican herd I heard about down the river. Only about 800 head, but... It's for sale. Now, the brush between here and there is just thick with wild critters, free for the taking. Now, we beat the brush growing down. We pick some up, and with the 800 we bought, we just might end up owning a herd. Where are you going? I'm going to get us some cash, my half of that reward money. Uh, this will make up for the money you're losing. Don't you never listen to me? Didn't you hear what I just said? Yeah, I heard you. Think I'd take a cent of that money even if I needed it, which I don't? You hear me? Which I don't. I can get my own herd. You're not just saying that. Listen, this isn't something I just dreamt up. I've been thinking about this for a long time. It's been tried before and it's worked fine. Just never had any reason to try it before. Now I've got a reason. When you just 
just going to pick up a herd of lousy scrub cattle? Well, there's nothing wrong with them. They just need gentling a little. Besides, up north they'll get just as good a price. And we won't have to split the profits with nobody neither. It'll work, Rowdy. All right. All right, then it's settled. We'll start beating them south in the morning. Let's get our gear ready, man. Hey, Rowdy. Thanks. Thanks for trying to help me. You shouldn't be worrying about that now. Well, what should I be worried about? I can't say, but... Well, there is something your old man's been spreading around that uh, you were in on it with him. He is your pa. Yeah, I know. This I lost. Bet's down. You gonna take that money? Dealer runs this game, mister. You take that money, yeah. Hammer. Come on, cash in. Well, it's about time. <laughs> All righty, I knew you'd come around. Dan, I bought you a horse. Get out of town fast, are we, before somebody takes a pot shot at us, huh? Oh, Rowdy boy. I'm sorry you was mad at me, but if you only knew how this makes me feel. Listen, boy. I never could tell you before, but I can now. I've been lonely. Awful lonely. I need you and your ma. Maybe it was just pride made me stay away, but now I'm glad. Awful glad. It's gonna be me, and you, and, and that little ranch. Shut up, Dan. It ain't gonna be nothing. You're gonna take that horse and that money and get out of here. You think this money's tainted too, huh? Isn't it? Look, I told you I didn't want any part of that money. Now you get on that horse and get out of here and don't ever come around me again. But you're more. She'd feel the same way I do. She wouldn't want a penny of it. Roddy boy, you can't send me away alone. I'm a... Poor old man, I'm your father. My father's been dead a long time. Rowdy! Rowdy! All right, all right, I don't need you, I don't need your ma, I don't need nobody. I got what I need. You can all rot in your pride. Your pride! For all I care. Ahí viene un jinete. Apaguen la lumbre. Tráiganmelo. Man, huh? We were Marcos's men, senor. It was Marcos's men, all right. And they got their money. They're just playing bandits now. Poor Pa. All his life he wanted that money. Look, you're going ahead. We'll bury him. It wasn't as bad as you'd think. If you'd known him like he was when I was little. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like you said, he, he died a long time ago. He stopped caring for those who loved him. I sent him out here. No, you didn't. He put himself on that road a long time ago. You gotta stop blaming yourself. You had nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. Try and forget it, huh? Yeah. 
brush critters are thickest just northeast of Laredo, about three days' ride from here. Your pay will start from the day you reach Rio Salado. Yeah, but there won't be any owners this time, and no small ranchers to give you an advance. How are we going to get the money? Out of my own pocket. You'll be working for me in more senses than one. You really meant what you said about owning your own herd. I meant it. I mean to own my own herd. Most of it, anyway. I'm going to use all the money I got. Some to buy beef, some to pay your wages while you're beating them out of the brushes. It's going to be a hard job, but you'll get paid. And I'll share a quarter of the profits with you. Well, what do you say? So here we go! I was hoping you'd take it like that. Well, what are you all standing around for? Come on, let's hit leather! <laughs> Round them up! Oh. Hey. Send you Jaspers out on a simple little job like rounding up some steers without one of you turning up sick. You're just like a bunch of little kids. Well, it mighty well better be for real because the boss is going to be mighty annoyed if I don't get back in time for supper. Well, Morgan's dead. Is that real enough for you? Yeah, he's dead, all right. No mistake in that. Yeah, but from what wish? Now, how do I know from what? I'm no magician. Go over there, Wish. It doesn't take any magician to know what killed that. Anthrax. Well, that answers your question. Now, where do you think you're going? Well, I'm gonna tell the man. He's gotta know. Well, not from you, he don't. You may have the stuff in you. Or maybe Quince, or... No, even me. Maybe even the rest of the herd. Well, somebody's gotta get to him. Have you figured out how? When we don't show up, they'll come looking. Well, there's one thing about it. Uh, them stairs have been cut off from the main bunch for three or four days now. Maybe the herd's lucky. And maybe they aren't. Well, what do we do? Well, first thing we got to do is bury that poor boy. Say a prayer over him. And then we'll say a prayer for us and the rest of the crew and the herd. After that? Well, we're going to have to kill off those strays and burn them and put them under the ground. Then... We just sit here a week or so and sweat till we know whether or not one of us has got to be buried too. That's well, bad enough when it's a bullet, but when a, something you can't see strikes a healthy man down. Wishbone? Rowdy, stay where you are! Rowdy, stay where you are! Don't come any closer! Look, the men back at camp are starving. What's the matter? You lost your mind? Anthrax! Anthrax? Morgan's dead. Well, you better... better kill off the rest of those strays, then. We're fixing to do just that. You realize that, uh... you can't come back to camp, not just yet, anyway. Yeah, we know that, Rowdy. You'll know where to catch up with us if everything turns out all right now. Yeah, yeah, we know. Rowdy! Yeah? You send that boy's belongings back to his family. Yeah, I'll do that the first time we get to. Good luck. In case we don't catch up with you, you know what to do with our stuff too, huh? Well, it's too late to kill those bees today. Might as well wait till morning, huh? Yeah, might as well try to get some sleep. We got any of that anthrax in us. We're gonna need all the rest we can get. is this? Up. 
You will come, all of you. Come where? You will come now. Saddle dein Pferd schnell. Hop. Come saddle your horse quickly. Oh, hold on now. We can't go no place till we kill some steers. Yeah, our cattle have got anthrax. We got to kill them, like he says. Make ready your horse. Anthrax! Anthrax! Our cattle are sick. Maybe we are too. Go away! I will shoot. <laughs> Karl, du, Friedrich und Wilhelm werden das Vieh hüten. Jawohl. I'll tell you just one more time, mister. Them cattle are diseased. They've already killed one of us. Save your breath, Quince. They're foreigners or something. They don't understand what you're saying. Who cares? If they want to die. That's their business. Hey, Wish, Clay, look yonder. They got cattle of their own. Hey, mister, don't let our sick cattle get in there with yours. Now, if they want to kill their own beeves, let them do that, too. Wait for me here. Pass out. You recall that bunch of Swiss people we bumped into on the trail last year? Well, they talk German just like these folks here. Figure that's what they are? Oh, I sure don't know, and I don't care. You mess around like this and make a fella half mad. You wait till they find out about the anthrax. You want to see somebody get mad. Inside. Und was haben Sie als Entschuldigung anzuführen? Keiner, Herr Graf. Sie kennen Ihre Strafe? Die Peitsche? Jawohl, Herr Graf. Abführen! Elsa, was haben wir sonst noch für heute? Uh, die Bauhausangelegenheit, Excellenz. Now look, Mr. Uh, whoever you are, knock this off just long enough to tell us what this is all about, will you? I, I don't speak this gibberish. I, how do I get through to him? You will remain silent until I choose to address you. Well, he speaks our lingo anyway. I speak English, if that is what you are trying to say. And it has appeared to be a better English than anybody else can manage to speak in this barbaric part of the world. Good. And maybe you can speak better enough to tell us why those monkeys of yours brought us here. I am Ulrich, Count von Schulenberg und von Amster. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? Well, Count, this is Clay Forrester, and that's Jim Quince. My name is Wishbone. Wishbone? G.W. Wishbone. We're drovers with a herd of cattle bound for Abilene. Well, you still haven't told us why we were bushwhacked. Bushwhacked? That is a word with which I'm not familiar. What does it mean? Well, it means uh, getting jumped on with guns and herded somewhere we didn't want to go. Ah, so. <laughs> Well, my man found you on my property. They have orders to bring all trespassers to me. Trespassing? There was no signs posted. My estate extends to more than 50,000 acres. It is impossible to post all of it. Well, Count, uh, now you know who we are. You just turn us loose and we promise to get off all of your property. I am the one who will decide when you will go. Look, those uh, men of yours, they also brought some beeves. I have been informed of that. Have you also been informed that those beeves are sick? Sick? 
Of course they are sick. All American cattle are sick. Sick, scrawny, half-starved beasts. <laughs> when I think of our beautiful, fat cattle from Holstein. No, but he don't mean sick like that, Count. He means real sick. Anthrax. Uh, anthrax? This is another word with which I'm not familiar. You never heard of anthrax? I am not a peasant, I am an officer. Formerly on the staff of His Imperial Majesty Kaiser Wilhelm I. I know nothing about cattle diseases. Oh, well, you sure better find out, because this is a bad one. Those cattle ought to be taken off somewhere and killed. Taken off somewhere? <laughs> You're a very clever gentleman, but you do not fool me. Well, I'm not trying to fool anybody. You are a nation of tricksters, knaves, and cheats. But your wits are no match for those of a Prussian. If my cattle are sick, which I do not believe, then my men are good German peasants and they will cure them. Well, there isn't any cure. They just drop dead. Sometimes even people... Uh, your cattle? This is my land and everything that is on it. Everything that walks, grows, crawls or flies belongs to me. And that includes animals, birds or human beings. Are you figuring on counting us in on that? <laughs> you are my guests. You will visit with me. You will teach me of your country. And when I have learned everything, then you will go. <laughs> oh, now wait a minute. The discussion has ended. Siegfried. Take them to the house, let them clean up and rest. Up here. Yeah, well, Excellenz. Elsa, we will write a letter to Count von Bismarck. My yes, lieber Otto. What did he do to deserve that? In subordination. Questioned an order of Count Ulrich. Gentlemen, we will drink a toast. To His Imperial Majesty. Kaiser Wilhelm I. Like to sit down, ma'am. Mr. Wishbone, a servant does not sit at the table with her master. Have they not yet learned that in this savage country? Well, I imagine any that has servants has learned it. Just happens I haven't had much experience like that. <laughs> of course not. What could a drover know about good manners? Please forgive me if I embarrassed you, ma'am. As as German and of good stock, nothing said or done by a native could possibly embarrass her. Now, please, sit down, Mr. Wishbone. Hmm? Gentlemen, did you enjoy your dinner? Well, it's a lot better than the grab bowl Wishbone hands out. Oh, you are a cook, Mr. Wishbone? And a good one. But yes, of course. A cattle drive is like a, an army march. Uh, what uh, kind of food is this, Count? Simple, simple army cooking. Very simple. But of the Prussian army. <laughs> I'm a soldier, gentlemen. I like soldiers' food. But tell me something, Count. How come you left Germany and came all the way out to this part of the country? I will ask the questions. Well, now, gentlemen, tell me about yourselves. Where do you all come from? Uh, well, I'm a mountain man. These fellows are from Texas. Texas? A wasteland. I don't know. We kind of like it. Well, how could you know about it? Peasants who herd cattle? Uh, like you say, Count, I may not know much about good manners, but I know it ain't polite to insult your guests. But, Mr. Forrester, we are not equals. Therefore, I cannot possibly insult you. Uh, simmer down. Well, Count, uh, we'd like to hear about this Germany, if that wouldn't be asking a question. About Germany? Deutschland? Mein schönes Deutschland. <laughs> How can I make you Americans see it as I see it? The most beautiful country in the world. The campaigns, the night rides, 
the sound of horses' hooves, hundreds of hooves, the sabers rattling against the saddles. And then the bugle. Charge. Attack in. The battle, the glorious, glorious battle. Deutschland, Deutschland, die Baris. And now I'm in this lonely land, full of stupid fools, savage Indians and strangers. <coughs> Why do you serve me warm champagne? That's just about the rudest thing I've ever seen in my life. I wish one, please. Please, ma'am, don't try to stop me. We're not in that wonderful Germany of his. I can say what I want. He did not know what he was doing. He, he has had too much to drink. Well, drunks aren't any stranger to me, ma'am. But I've never seen liquor make a man do that to a respectable lady. You may think you're a fancy gentleman, Count, but to me, you're nothing but a cheap, drunken bum. Get out of my way. Good morning, gentlemen. I understand I made something of a boor of myself last night. You mighty well did. I wish to make apologies. It is bad when I drink too much and think of the fatherland at the same time. Please forgive me, it will not happen again. Well, that's all right, Count. Too much booze will sometimes make most any of us act like that. Thank you. Gentlemen, I've been admiring your horses. Well, they're only uh, cow ponies. I wonder if I could ask you a favor, any one of you. What's that? Would one of you ride his horse for me and show me what he's capable of? Well, uh, Quince is as good a rider as we've got. Ah, Mr. Quince, would you mind? I'll have Siegfried saddle your horse. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'm saddling myself. Your horses have an interesting conformation. We have nothing like that in Germany. Was that good or bad? This was meant as a compliment, Mr. Forrester. All right. Well, I'll try to show you what he can do. Better on the south end of the stairs. I was getting sighted at. Halt! What is los? It is Milzbrand. What is this? Bury him. Weiter gehen. Sie da! Weitermachen! Schnell! We tried to warn you, you wouldn't listen. Siegfried informs me it is a fatal disease called Milzbrand. Oh, so that's what you call it, huh? He also tells me all of the cattle has to be destroyed. Oh, we're very sorry for all this combat. How many times did we try to tell you? I have no need to be reminded of that. The cattle can be replaced, so can the man. Put the Americans to work and have them do whatever has to be done with the animals. Well, we owe you that much at the very least. Then, when they have finished with the cattle, you will put them to work with the rest on the foundation. Now, hold on a minute. What? We'll take care of those bees, but we're not going to do any work on that house for you. The man must be replaced. Free of your natives for one good German. Fair exchange. But it's not our fault. We were brought here under guns. Even then, we tried to get through that thick skull of yours that our cattle were sick. But you're too bullheaded to listen. Well, of course it was my fault, and you will pay for it. Up to you. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> If you were a German, I would have shot you for that. As you are an ignorant American, I will be lenient this time. Now, the construction of my manor house will not be delayed. From now on, you will be my property. No better, no worse than anything else around here. How long do you think this little arrangement is going to last? Until my house is finished. Then, I will decide. Count, we're not going to stay here that long at all. Now, as soon as we show up missing, no doors are going to look for us, and they're big and they're mean, and there are about 20 of them. 
My men are Prussian soldiers. Do you believe we have any fear of rabble? Look! Oh. One of these days I'm going to take that joker and bust him in half. Yavol, Herr Siegfried, Yavol. How come you can speak such good German after only two days? I'm smart. Totsarbeit. Does pretty good for himself, doesn't he? Well, he's a count, you know. Yeah. I wonder what he's counting way out here in Texas. I will ask the questions. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you. Uh... Thank you. Grässliches Essen. Das ist doch Herr zum Hotzen. Hey! Oh. All right, Akton! Horses, let's go. Every meal gets worse and worse! It cannot be helped, Excellency. You're aware the only one here who knew how to cook was Joachim. And he is the one who died of the Milzbrand. Then get me another cook! Excellent shot, was it not, gentlemen? In my regiment, all men were marksmen, and I was considered the best. Take this. I expected you to attempt escape. I would have done it myself. I will not punish you this time. Siegfried, you think you can hang on to this one? Jawohl, Excellenz. Now, gentlemen, let me remind you that you are more than 100 miles from the nearest community. If you try to escape again, we will find you. And then I promise you, we will shoot you down like animals. Take them back to work. Move! I know. To work. German partridges, but uh, these will have to do. See that they are prepared properly. Giving this Jasper the benefit of all of my talents. You know, I might just poison him. Yeah, I I know how you must feel, Herr Wishbone. Who does he think he is, anyway? Acting like he was a trail boss or something, ordering us around. Just don't you worry. I'm going to figure us a way out of this. Perhaps this will be a way to do that, Herr Wishbone. Well, maybe so. But I doubt it. No, as soon as he gets a taste of my cooking, he's just liable to never let me go. It's a good thing we had this good old red eye along with us. Of course, it isn't cognac, but good whiskey is just about the same thing. Ah, <sighs> yeah, 
That's the flavor, all right. That's got that good old flavor. It's a secret recipe given to me by a real genuine English lord. <laughs> Did you ever taste anything so wonderful in all your life? <coughs> I think it needs more whiskey. In the name of heaven, that wish brought... <coughs> what is that? Well, it's Prairie Hen Marguerite. Like I was telling you, this English lord was traveling out west. Do you know what Count Ulrich would do to you if you served this to him? Well, probably give me a medal, him being a German officer and all. He would shoot you. He might flog you first, but in any case, he would shoot you. Miss Elsa, are you trying to tell me that my prairie hen Marguerite isn't any good? Herr Wishbone, in all my life, I have never tasted anything worse. I'll have you to know that there are those that say that I'm the best cook of any herd on the trail. Herr Wishbone, the other evening, you left the table because you believed I had been insulted. Well, you had been, throwing wine in your face like that. I have not yet thanked you for, for thinking I should be treated like a woman. Well, aren't you? <laughs> and a darn pretty one, too. Uh, you know, I am the Count's secretary and housekeeper. I am not supposed to cook. Well, of course not. Cooking's a pretty special business. Got to be done by experts. I will help you. Yeah, well, thanks just the same. I don't need any help. Oh, just a little. I will uh, be your assistant. All right, Miss Elsa. You got a mind to, you can be my assistant. Thank you, Herr Wishbone. Let's see. What's the first thing we can have you do? Now, the first thing is to start at the beginning with a new chicken. Never since I've left Germany have I eaten such food. Where did you learn how to prepare prairie hen in such a manner? Well, uh, you see, Count, um, uh... An English nobleman journeying in the West taught him an old family secret. English nobleman? English? Uh-huh. Hmm. I could have sworn this has a German flavor. <laughs> Why not? The English steal everything from us. Mr. Wishbone, from now on, you are relieved from all other duties. All you will do here is cook for me. Well, that's mighty friendly of you, Count. <laughs> now, you must take good care of yourselves. You must get ample rest. Your mind must remain free so you can think up the most wonderful dishes to serve me. Well, my mind remains pretty free. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I never knew my back had so many muscles to ache. You Americans are not used to work. Why not this kind of work? Uh, burrowing in the ground like moles. You couldn't pay me to do this. What's the account pay you guys, anyway? Uh, well, whatever it is, it isn't half enough. Pay us? Nothing. Nothing? What do you mean, nothing? We belong to Khan Uri. You mean you're slaves? We are not slaves. Count Ulrich is our hereditary lord and master. We are his people. Here in the United States? That does not matter. Our families have served the House of Schulenberg for hundreds of years. Oh, yeah, back in Germany, I heard there was something going on like that, but uh, that kind of thing has gone out of style in this country. Oh, sure. Ever since the war, they just don't do a lot of things like that out here. You mean what Count Ulrich is doing here is unlawful? You bet your dang boots it is. If any American lawman found out about it, he'd make it hot for that town, why? You got no right bossing you people around like he does. Your own words make you a liar, Herr Forrester. Well, listen here, Buster. You have factories in this country and big ranches. Now, how is the work done if you do not have leaders to give orders and workers to obey them? <laughs> we got leaders, all right, if that's what you want to call them. And some of them are pretty rough. 
As a matter of fact, Quince and I here work for one of the roughest. <laughs> it is as I have said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it is a little different. When we work, we choose to work and we get paid for it. And if we get fed up, we go collect our wages and we quit. Ugh. And the same thing applies to all of you now that you're here. Well, anytime you get fed up with Count Ulrich, why, he can just pick up and go and he can't do a single thing to anyone. That's right. You know that? You have listened to his lies long enough. Now, everyone, back to work. Everyone, to work. <laughs> I still think you ought to let me be doing my job. Because once this count tastes my real cooking, he'll never be satisfied with anything less. Tell me, Herr Wishbone, did you really mean it when you said I was pretty? Well, of course I meant it. Are you sure you don't want me to do the cooking? Nobody before ever told me I was pretty. What's the matter with that count? Hasn't he got eyes? Ulrich? He does not even know I'm a woman, much less a pretty woman. He... He's of the highest nobility in Germany, the bluest blood. I uh, am nobly born, too, but so far beneath him, I might as well be a peasant. No, I wish born. He would have no reason to notice me that way. Well, there isn't any such thing in this country. None of that nobility and peasants and stuff. No, sir, everybody's just the same as anybody else. No, I was born. It says so right there in our Constitution. I'm afraid that would mean nothing to Ulrich. You're kind of stuck on that guy, aren't you? Stuck on him? I mean, you like him. You like him real well. Ah, yes, I was born. I like him real well. Well, I sure don't see why, the way he treats you. You're a kind man, I wish. You, you must not be too harsh on him, though. He's very lonely for the fatherland. Yeah, that's one thing I don't understand. What's he doing over here, anyway? He was banished from Germany. Banished? By the Kaiser himself. What did he do? Ulrich was a colonel with the Hussars. Yeah, that sure is a fancy uniform. During a battle, he was given orders to withdraw his regiment. His position was hopeless. But he was too sure of himself, too reckless, too arrogant. He disobeyed orders. He commanded his men to attack. Almost every man was killed. Ulrich wanted to die himself. But he was saved for another fate. His family had served the Hohenzollers too long for him to be placed in front of a firing squad, as he deserved. Instead, he was exiled. The German embassy bought this land, and he was sent here to stay forever. And here, in this desolate place, he lives and remembers, tries to create around himself Another Germany. A Germany he will never see again. I wish, Bon, if the Count knew. Oh, I know. Yeah, he'd have your hide. I don't know why I tell you all this. Well, because you're a human being, and sometimes people got to talk to each other. Now, don't you worry. I forgot it already. Thank you, Sean, I wish, Bon. I mean, thank you very much. Now, about this venison. How will you explain this recipe when you serve it to him? Well, I hadn't really put my mind to it yet. Let's see. Why don't you tell Ulrich it was taught to you by an Indian chief? An Indian chief. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> I have been informed you have been making inflammatory statements to my man. You have urged them to revolt, to run away. I urged them nothing of the kind. All I did was tell them their rights here. Yes, but they have no rights here. In this country, they have the same rights as everybody else. On my land, I have the rights and I alone. Seignorial rights. High and low. 
Oh, I have a feeling that one day you're going to find out a little different. Mr. Forrester, it is you who will find out differently. I sentence you to ten strokes. Oh, you lay a whip on me and I'll kill you. Ten strokes. I'm warning you. Fifteen! Take him out of here before I order him whipped to death! <laughs> That was sure some smart Indian chief. <laughs> You'd better kill me while you've got the chance. Oh, no, it can't be. Get your dirty load. You son, you can't do that. The count's a thing all. This is Count Ulrich's order. If it is, I'll, I'll, I'll kill him. I'll put poison in his food. Don't. Wish. Clumsy as a mule. Uh, you and your big mouth talking to those Prussians like that. When are you ever going to learn to mind your own business? Well, you shut that big hairy face of yours. I've got this over with. He, he's only trying to help you, Evo. Mm -hmm. Never mind this big mouth, Miss Elsa. Time to worry is when he stops complaining. Uh, him growling like a little grizzly is a good healthy sign, ain't it? Talk, 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 talk. Oh, I think I will never understand Americans. That sure goes both ways. I don't think I'll ever understand Prussians. Especially Prussian counts. Are you gonna finish, Wishbone? All right, get up. Uh, easy. Boy, remind me to forget you if I ever need doctrine again. I sure will. Uh, Quince! Get up. I ain't even started on you yet. Quince! Let him alone, Jim. He's not a man, he's a peasant. Well, what are you doing here? Still scouting for that lord and master of yours? Don't even ask him the time of day. You'll trot right back there and tell that leader of his. Uh, lay off of him, Quince. He can't help being what he is. Why don't you just turn around and go? You're not exactly among friends. I... I came here to say... I believe I did a wrong thing. <laughs> Siegfried, that's very generous of you. That sure makes me feel a whole lot better. Please. I have been thinking thinking you kind of people don't even know what that word is you have a right to hate me oh, I don't hate you Siegfried I save that for human beings Herr Forster Count Ulrich is not only my master in the army he was also my commanding officer yeah all the soldiers in your army taught to be such good squealers all my life I have been taught only one thing to be loyal to Count Ulrich to warn him when danger threatened him my father served his father the same way, and my father's father. I suppose, as Wish says, you can't help being what you are. That still don't tell us what he's doing here. Ever since I was old enough to know what is my place in this life, I have spoken with Count Ulrich's voice. And I have seen with Count Ulrich's eyes, and I have listened with Count Ulrich's ears. I, I have known no other way. Well, stop spying for him and get out of here. Wait. He's trying to say something. And now what? And now, I ask questions. I ask questions of Ulrich. But what kind of questions? Herr Forster, those things you were saying to all of us, I want to hear more. You will notify the embassy that approximately half of the lumber required for the house has been delivered. The foundation is coming well along, and we will soon be able to start construction. But we cannot start construction until the rest of the material has arrived. Du lieber Gott im Himmel! How long do these swine expect me to live uh, in a tent like a gypsy? You will prepare that letter for my signature today. Siegfried will leave for the town tomorrow. He can put it in the mail. I gave you an order. There is something I wish to discuss with you, Excellency. About the new house? No, Excellency. About the kitchen? Has Mr. Wishbone caused any trouble? No, Excellency. Well, is it about uh, supplies? You will deal with Siegfried directly. Don't bother me with petty detail. It is not about supplies. If it is about none of these matters, what have we to discuss? Nothing, Excellency. 
You are wasting my time. Prepare that letter immediately and show it to me when you have it finished. I may wish to make some changes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. You all right, Clay? Yeah, yeah, fine. Why don't you take this shovel? It might be easy. Look, Jim, I said I'm fine. His foot, you will not speak unless you're spoken to. Carl, go back to work. I cannot. I said, Carl, go back to work. I will not. I do not obey you now. We are not in Germany. <laughs> You who will be shot. Siegfried, put down your gun. Come, Uri. You have given your last order. Siegfried, you're not going to shoot anybody. You crazy wish, get out of the way. Now, Fishbowl, step to one side. You started this fire, and I'll come in here and help put it out. You're right, Clay. This is murder. Now, Fishbowl. Now, Forrester. We are only doing what you told us we may do. We didn't tell you to murder anybody. But we are free men. You told us that. Free doesn't mean free to kill. Siegfried, I am your liege lord. I have led you in battle. You have entrusted your lives to me. Siegfried, hand me your gun. Man, I am your father. You are all my children. Siegfried, come. Hand me your gun. No! Elsa! There's nothing to say, Excellency. You told me so yourself. Elsa, I command you! Yavo, you are the commander. You led them in battle, and they did entrust their lives to you. And where are the others now, Ulrich? They are dead. They are dead, Ulrich. That was war. That was not war. That was slaughter. Hundreds of them killed like dogs. My brother among them. He was a soldier. He died like a soldier. He died like an animal because of you. I did not realize you hated me, Elsa. Because you realize nothing. Then kill me, Elsa. And rid yourself of your hate. Ah, oh, nein, Ulrich. Nein. A bullet was denied to you in Germany. It will be denied to you now. Flog him. Ich bitte dich. How does one say thank you for a new life? Well, you just live it, son. You just live it. Live it up, he means. I mean nothing of the kind. I understand what he means. Oh, say, uh, there's no call for you people to worry about anthrax. Uh, 
Mitzel brand, I think you call it. Uh, well, the uh, time's passport show up again. Thank you, Aquins. No, Elsa. You will not go. Elsa, I forbid it. Where will you go in this terrible country? Does it matter, Ulrich? Elsa... I will not know what to do without you. But the men are all staying. They will serve you. I mean, they will work for you. Oh, nonsense. You paid them wages. Who ever heard of such a thing? It will be better, Ulrich. You will see it will be better. Slowly, we all will learn. Auf Wiedersehen, Ulrich. Oh, Elsa, stay. Please. All my life, I have known I have loved you. Then you will not leave me. But I have this hatred for you, too. No. You did not know what you were doing. I didn't know, Ulrich. And I have to go away and, and be alone and, and discover what is truly in me. What it feel like? Well, Mr. Favor sent us in here to get supplies, not to waste time getting ready to up. See you later. I'll be with you in just a minute. Oh, I just wanted one of the baths. Oh, well, uh, straight back the hot water's on the stove. That costs you a lot more in the city. <laughs> they wouldn't get it. It's a fair price for everything, Harry. If the man doesn't pay enough, he's a cheapskate. If he pays too much, he's a fool. Uh, nobody could call you either one, that's for sure. Oh, thank you, Harry. Well, here's for your haircut. And this is to buy us a little drink at my place. Sure thing, Mr. Lindy. <laughs> Yesterday, Mr. Lanny. Sure hate to leave. Best hotel in the territory. Maybe I ought to raise my rates. Shall sure. Sheila, you're going to Twin Falls, aren't you? Oh, just for three days. And you were going to tell me, were you? Well, I thought it would be pleasanter that way. I see I was right. You promised me that the next time you went, you'd take me with you. Don't you think I ever want to get out of this grubby little town the same as you do? Well, Sheila, this is business. I'm meeting some important people. It wouldn't look right for me to have a female companion along. Well, now, how would it look if the female companion were your wife? 
We've been all through that. Someday, someday you're going to walk out on once too often, John Lundy, and I'm not going to be here when you come back. And in fact, that day might be today. You'll be here. Oh? What makes you so sure? Because when that beautiful Irish temper of yours is under control, you're smart enough to realize that you're better off now than you were when I first met you. Oh. Besides, you know, if you even lose another man, I'd kill you both. Well, now, if I cared that much about somebody, I'd want the whole world to know it. By marrying them. Well, that's where we're different. See, I don't care about the rest of the world. Now, you just pick those brushes and put them back. With oh, them. now you think you can order... orders. No saloon time until I get back. That way you can have a nice long rest. You might even catch up on your sewing. Oh. Hi. Will you come too soon? I haven't finished loading yet. Oh, that's all right. I can wait. <clears throat> <laughs> well, you feel better? Oh, a little bit. Nice three-inch steak and some music and things. I'll be right. <laughs> oh, you really got trail fever. <sighs> Who's that? John Landy on Saloon. No kidding, you know him? Well, not personal. He can be a mean one. You know, I was in here a couple of years ago when there was a little ruckus going on over there. He took a couple of cowboys by the head and banged them together like they was a pair of gongs. Darned the son you ever heard in your life. Oh, excuse me. All right, right, brother. No, I'm done. Uh, you wouldn't care to make a contribution for the church, for good of your soul. Oh, uh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. And you, brother? Oh, well, it's too late to do anything about my soul. If I haven't got it made already, I never will. Whatever you say, it's your soul. Uh, well, just a minute, Parson. Just in case the jury's still out. Thank you. Thank you. What else we need? Well, cornmeal and... Cornmeal and sugar and molasses. Uh, you go order the horseshoes. We'll come up first thing in the morning. I'll meet you at the hotel. Oh, uh, get two rooms, will you? I want to listen to you snoring when I come in. When you come in from where? I don't honestly think I rode all the way in on that wagon just to get a good night's sleep to you. So that's the reason you were so agreeable when Mr. Fever said you should come in. Yeah, that's one of them. Well, what was the other one? Well, Mr. Fever said, uh, Roddy, how would you and Wishbone like to ride into town and pick up supplies? And I know that means Roddy get going. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wish, but that was a real good supper. It looks all right. If you like things overcooked, not enough seasoning, too much grease. Why didn't you tell the man how you wanted it? I'm on vacation. Anyway, no cook ever tells another cook how to cook. Listen to that. Civilization. Yeah, that sounds like the piano needs a tune. Now, come on, I'm buying. Oh, no, no, no. I just needed some soda and some sleep, and I'm not going to get either one in there. I wish you're getting old. Well, you go in there, and you'll soon catch up with me. <laughs> now, if I play it right, I don't even pass you Hold 
them about that, huh? Yes, sir. Mind if I join in the game? Can't you look on the wrong side of the street, Parson? I would say for a good cause. I'm a, well, my winnings are going to build in a new church. Jack's about it open? He said. Well, what's wrong with a short walk on a long nut? Not a pair of wings and it should be complete. <laughs> Jimmy? No, thank you. Real hospital town. What's the matter, cowboy? You lonesome? Whatever gave you that idea? It's because I'm sitting all alone here. Well, now, a man with your assets certainly shouldn't have any trouble. Don't you know anybody in town? No, nope, not at all. Drifter, huh? Well, a drawer. That's uh, the same thing, only you get paid for it. <laughs> you married, miss? No. Why? No reason why you had joined me, is there? Well, now, you've got a point there, mister. Why shouldn't I sit down? Nobody owns Sheila Delancey. That's the spirit. Miss uh, Delancey, is it? Uh -huh. Ronnie Yates is my name. Hey, waiter, uh, two more of these. You heard, my friend. So, you come into town looking for a big night and nobody will play with you. Yeah, well, that's the story of my life. Up to now, that is. Oh, don't get any ideas, mister. I sat down for a minute to keep you company. That's what she said, and you know Sheila. And I know John Landy, too. I guess there's only one thing to do. The cowboy, too? He looked like he could use a good night's sleep. It'll keep him out of trouble. Compliments of the house. Compliments of the house. Well, tell me about yourself, Mr. Rowdy Yates. Well, there really ain't too much to tell you. Oh, it's not the way men generally react to that question. Usually it's enough to set them off for hours. Compliment of the house. Oh, thank you. Uh, maybe they lead more interest in lives than I do. Well, if they don't, they sure make them up. What about you? Well, now, let's see. Which one do you want? The one where I'm... Respected member of the community, couple of kids, husband, or, uh, or the real one. Walks in beauty like the night. <laughs> well, uh, the real story can't be that bad. Not with a face as pretty as yours. Well, poetry and awkward too. Not a bad combination, Miss Yates. Orphans. That's who we are. Orphans. Two lonely, lost orphans. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it. Them bills are guaranteed to flatten a mule in ten minutes. <laughs> Ships. Ships pass in the night. That's where we are. Beautiful. And tomorrow? Tomorrow we go our lonely way again. Why? Why? Why well, should... We have to lead each other. What do you mean? Why couldn't we just go on being lonely together? You mean get married? Why? 
Why pass in the night when we can sail together? Oh, that's a lovely thought. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Serve them right. Hey, and there, there is just the man who can help us out. It's getting late, Parson. Call or quit. I called. Base is full. <laughs> Our destiny awaits us. That's me. Those building church will have to wait like it's a cart. Say you wouldn't care to make a voluntary contribution. Not me. No, I'm going home. Uh, Parson, uh, we, we'd like to ask a big favor of you. Well, some other time. No, I can't wait. Uh, we want to get married right away. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I, uh, I, uh, well, perhaps, sir. Uh, I could arrange some of time. I'd be very happy to marry you two fine young people. Oh, far away. <laughs> uh, will you uh, join hands, please? Uh, we are gathered here together uh, to join these two in marriage. Uh, what is your name? Uh, Rowdy Yates. Uh, and do you, Rowdy Yates, take this woman to your no, wedded wife? Wait a minute, you can't do this. Who said so? Now look, you know what's going to happen when Lane shows up. Ah, uh, shut up. Yeah, uh, shut up. Now listen, you. Look, uh, this woman happens to be 21 years of age or older, I figure she is, than just butt out. Yeah, you heard him butt out. Yeah. All right. But, uh... But you better be around when Landy shows up, and that's not a bad idea to you, too. Let's see, where were we? Uh, 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 do, do you take this woman to be your wedded wife? Yep. Uh, uh, do you do the same? To be my lawful wedded wife. Well, your husband. Oh, yes. Uh, then I pronounce you man and wife. Five dollars, please. Not it, him. Don't name me Yates. Sheriff's office is three doors down. I don't want the sheriff. I'm looking for a tall, skinny fellow with a lot of yellow hair. Came in here last night about 8 o'clock. Look, we get lots of tall, skinny... Hey, wait a minute. You say yellow hair? Yeah. Young fellow? That's him. You know where he is? I sure do. Hey, he didn't get in some kind of fight or something. Not yet. He sure got one coming up. What do you mean, coming up? Did he get hurt? It'd be mighty mysterious. That's your boy? That's him. Hey, mighty nice of you to take care of him like this. How much is the room? It's on the house. Oh, that's mighty generous of you. Hey, what's this? Read it. Concern on this date, I was pleased to join Miss Sheila Delancey to Mr. Rowdy Yates. The bonds of matrimony signed the Reverend. Is this some kind of a joke, son? You don't see me laughing, do you? I was one of the witnesses. Well, you mean he went and got himself married last night? I tried to stop him. Well, where is she? I mean, where's the bride? Some bridegroom. Who is she? I mean, besides being the bride. John Landy's girl. The John Landy? There's only one. gonna do? What do you mean, we? I didn't marry her. Marry who? Her, that's who. Ooh, not so loud. Oh, oh that's a little girl I talked to last night. What do you fellas do in the ledge room? That isn't any lady, that's your wife. My what? 
Your wife. You and her got married last night. Oh, oh come on, you're crazy. You're the one that's crazy marrying John Landy's girlfriend. I look, wish I'll admit I talked to her. But... Read that. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I was there. Did John Landy know about this? He's out of town. Good, then we're going to be the same before he gets back. Come on, let's go. Oh, wait a minute. We can't walk off and leave her here like this. We're not going to walk. We're going to gallop as fast as those horses will take us. I can't wait. None of, none of this thing's true. If, if I really did marry her. I can't look up that preacher and get it canceled. I don't know about things like that. And it may take time. Well, in the meantime, let's just keep it between the three of us. There's witnesses. They'll be all over town by noon. Well, this, this Landy fellow, sure, surely he'll understand when he finds out it was a mistake, you know. Mister, I wouldn't like to be either one of you when he finds out. Well, we can't do much more than take her with us until we get this thing settled, anyway. Take her on the cattle drive? What do you think Mr. Finger will say to that? Oh, yeah, I am. That's what you have to find out. Just go into town and get some supplies, he says. Some supplies. <laughs> I just can't believe it. Me, my age, pulling a stunt like that. Ooh, you must have loaded my drink. That makes a lot of sense. The bartender. Go, Bert. Yeah, that figures. Landy says jump. Bert asks how high. A little do more than jump when I get my hands on it. Oh, what good is that gonna do? At least as far as the marriage paper is concerned. She should have told me last night about Landy. Back up, Buster. You think I want to get married? No, bicker, bicker, bicker. You two ought to be ashamed of yourselves. After all, you're on your honeymoon. Oh, he's a real riot. <laughs> Mr. Fraver, it's only a real interesting conversation. Yeah, maybe, maybe you ought to get in the back for a while, at least until we get the news broken to him. Why? What's he got to get sore about? You and me are ones that got married. He just happens to be a trail boss and didn't send us into town to get any woman. You better do what your husband says. Oh, you're making this sound better every minute. Help you out of this thing the best I can. If we can get to a town and get this marriage canceled, let's try and get along, huh? Hi. Hi. Everything go all right? Well, we got the supplies, if that's what you mean. Good, good. Oh, when you get back to camp, you help uh, Scott on the flank. He's got a lot of streets to pick up. Uh, right. Uh, Mr. Paver? Yep. Uh, well, uh, things didn't go quite right in town last night. What? You in trouble with the law again? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. It's a good thing. Tell me about it later, then. Well, you really laid it on the line. See why Mr. Fair won't ever let me go into town with you and sit in Mr. Rowdy. Got a feeling maybe next time it will. Where is she? She took 
bucket of water to wash them. You better get it over with while you can. Good luck. talk to you about uh, last night, what happened in town. Oh, later, Roddy, I'm washing No, up. I gotta talk to you about this right now. Look, Roddy, I know all about it. You don't have to tell me. You do? I ah, sure. Got drunk again, got in a fight. Oh, boss. Look, Roddy, what a man does in his own time is his own business. You mean that? Of course. As long don't affect the hurt, no concern of mine. Oh, this won't affect the hurt, really. No, she won't be any bother at all. Good. What did you just say? She won't be any bother at all, Miss Delancey. Uh, my wife, sort of. You trying to tell me that you got married, sort of? Yeah, in a way. And you brought her with you? Yeah? Oh, yeah, well, I see I had to. The, the bartender, he felt that... The bartender? Was... What has the bartender got to do with it? Well, he, uh, the, the place where she lives there in town. You mean you married a cheap dance hall train? Hold it, mister. You are talking about a lady. Oh, you fired. Fired? What's that? Do you think I'll contaminate your outfit? I will get my gear and collect my back pay. We'll move out of here. Where are we going to go? I can't go back to town. We'll find another town. You had enough sense to look after him. Since when was I promoter chaperone? Rowdy's full grown. Anyway, I didn't think he'd go that far. I didn't expect you'd go that far. What do you want me to do? Let him turn a drive into a traveling dance hall? Well, I just thought you'd be boss enough to handle it. Firing someone's real easy, but help him's an altogether different matter. Oh, you miracle. <laughs> Like that, Mr. Spoon, you're liable to get yourself fired, too. He can do without some trail hand, but he can't do without eating. How come you haven't got married like that? Do you expect to take your wife and drive all the way to Denver? No. It's just a terrible mistake, that's all. I figured the least I could do was get her to another town or something like that. Oh. Well, does she feel that way about it? So we would both fail. Hmm. Well, uh, well, you'd better see about fixing her up to play sleep. Do you see what I see? It must be the sun. Well, today, things are sure picking up around here. Another two weeks before we head to town. Don't be no picket. I'll get along. Mm. Now you'll find blankets in the wagon. Mister? Hmm? What may change your mind? Your sunny disposition. Hey, Miss Taylor, who's your friend? I mean, Mrs. Yates? Mrs. Rowdy Yates? Well, I've never been stared at so much in my life. They're acting like we're a couple of freaks or something. Honeymoons and cattle drives don't exactly go together. <laughs> How's it, Chow? Oh, uh, fine, fine, thank you. Oh, this is Mighty, uh, Wishbone's help. Assistant cook. Hello, Missy. Uh, pleased to meet you. Any seconds? Oh, no, thank you. Hey, I, I might have some, or I? I got a lot of work to do.
fool around this outfit. <laughs> Mind if I ask you something? Oh, no, since you're my husband. <laughs> this, uh, this Landy, think he's gonna come for you? I don't know. Why? I'm uh, just curious. You know, you've been his girl and so crazy about you and all. How come you two have never gotten married? I guess he just wasn't that crazy about me. You? You want to know the truth? Yep. All he had to do was ask me. Till last night. And then I realized, finally, that he never would. Any more questions? Uh, uh, crazy world, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it my oyster right now. Comfortable in there. Nothing. You ought to be here when there's a good wind blowing. Well, I guess it's better than cigar smoke. You know, some of the saloons I worked in, it was thick enough to walk on. Did you sing and dance and do them high kicks over your head? Yeah, I used to. I was younger. Well, you don't look old to me. Thank you, Marty. smile oh he vowed he would tease me he promised to bring me a bunch of blue ribbon to tie up my body looking for a man named Yates it's me stand over here in the clear Hold it. Hold it. Explain yourself, mister. Ask him. What am I asking you? I'm John Landy. I came here for two things, to kill him and to take her back with me. Hmm. You'd just give me your gun. I wasn't planning on shooting him in the back. I don't care what you was planning or not planning to do. I give the orders here. I didn't come here to talk. You must get back. Mister, I'm driving cat. I need absolutely every hand I got to do it. Now, if you and Mr. Yates want to kill each other, well and good. 
But he'll have to do it on his own time at the end of drive. Is that clear? You talk very clear with that gun in your hand. True. What about her? Do you need her to drive cattle? Miss Yates, you can go with the man or you can stay here with us. It's up to you and I. I wouldn't go with him if he crawled here on his hands and knees to ask me. Well, you bet your answer. Now move out. Not prefer you didn't come back. I didn't have any quarrel with you when I came here. You put yourself in it. Remember that. Long day tomorrow. Let's pack it in. Mr. Favor, know anything about mules? So? Well, you're going to learn a lot more. Except for the ears, John Landy is pure bread. He meant what he said. So do I. Fine, and we have a war on our hands, and for what? Look, Mr. Favor, why don't you just put me on a horse and head me east, like, say, towards St. Louis? Of course, then I have to worry about you most likely getting yourself lost out there. And running away from something don't solve anything. It only makes it worse. Besides, it begins the law. What law? A decision. You're a married woman now, you know. How about getting a little advance in the food I made all day? I'll send Jesus down with a horse from the Remuda. Chuck wagons up ahead. You tell the cook I told you it was all right to eat. Thanks. And check into the ramrod when you're through. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that fellow, Landy. Mr. Favor handled him. You don't know him. He's not used to losing. Well, fooling around with Mr. Favor is a good way to start. Uh, hey, hold the wagon! Mm. Hi. What do you want? Well, I'm a new hand. The boss may come and get something to eat. Oh, well, all I got up here is jerky. What you buy? Don't worry, you work for it. So, uh, can you tell me where the ramrod is? Right up there. Hey. Well, there's something familiar about that fellow's face. Not to me. Well, I guess all these pictures begin to look alike. I must be getting old. Yep. <laughs> Check in with you? Oh, I would meet him. Hey, I told you to check in with the ramrod. I couldn't find him. Well, he's right over there, big as life. You the ramrod? Yeah, that's right. Right. I'm a new hand. Boss told me to take my orders from him. All right, so you're right drag. We use an extra man back there. Right. Something else on your mind? No. No. There it is. How do we hit him? We 
we don't. Well, that's the reason we can't. There's 20 men out there. One with that mule-headed girl. Hit them out in the open, somebody's bound to get hurt. There's a cat in a bed. Either give the aids to us there, or the herd doesn't get through. Jim, turn the herd. We'll bed down here. Joe, you pass the word. Say a favor. I saw some men over in that region a little while ago. Which way are they headed? The same way we are. You think it was the men you chased out of camp? It wouldn't surprise me a bit. Miss Sheila? Oh. You think that we have a fight on hands? If they ask for it, you better pick yourself up a rifle from the supply wagon and pass the word. Muy bien, señor. I saw you talking, Mr. Favor. What's up there? You afraid, maybe, with his friends. Senor Chief. A rifle, please. Something you think I'm running a hotel or something, you'll eat when the rest of them do. Yeah, it's a long time between meals out there. Can I at least have a piece of jerky or something? Come on, wishbone, for the good of your soul. All right, here, take that and be happy. Thank you. People around here think I got nothing else in the world to... For the good of your soul. Good of your soul. I still say you had no reason to follow me. I had every reason. Your coming here just made it easier. Now I don't have to worry about who gets hit when I tell the boys to open up. Why don't you leave them alone? They haven't done anything to hurt you. No. I've got a right to marry whoever I want. Now you thought of that. You married him. You can have him when I get through with him. You mean you'd kill a man just because he hurt your pride? He'll have an even chance to kill me if he's man enough to take it. Oh. What are you doing here? I don't seem to think you are. Ace has told me you left camp. I figured this is where you came. Real imagine of you. Now you'll find out the kind of husband you picked. He hasn't got a husband. What are you trying to pull? They told me all about the ceremony. That's right, there was a ceremony, all right, but the man married us wasn't a real preacher. What? You're crawling pretty far to get on a fight. Wishbone was the one who discovered him. Take a look, Sheila. Look familiar? Him? Tell him. Well, I just play acting, you know, so the law wouldn't recognize me, that's all. It wasn't my idea to marry him. He made me do it. Well, it's five dollars. Are you trying to tell me that the man who married you is working for you and you didn't know it? Look, I didn't know anything that happened that night, and the next day I wouldn't have recognized my own brother. Well, you can check Bert on that. He fed us some of those giggle pills of his, but... I guess they didn't work fast enough. So you... You were never really married. That's what I'm telling you. We were planning on getting it canceled at the end of the drive anyway. Well, why'd you leave town? Why didn't you just stay there and have it canceled? Well, I had to get back to work, and I figured town wasn't exactly the healthy spot for her. <laughs> yeah. I guess I was some unhappy when I heard about it. Well, you want to go back and get your things back? What for? So we can go home, what'd you think? I think you're taking a lot for granted. 
Well, the uh, way I look at it is that it, it isn't safe to have you run around single. You might run into a real preacher next time I'm away. Well, if, if this is a proposal, you can say it right. Stubborn, isn't she? <clears throat> Mr. Lancey, would you uh, do me the honor of becoming my wife? Mr. Landy, I would be most pleased and proud to accept a proposal of marriage, providing we find another preacher. No hard feelings. Good luck. You're the nicest man I was ever almost married to. If he ever gives you any trouble, just remember we got Sam here with us. <laughs> So long, Roddy. If you're ever in my town again, remember the drinks are on the house. On the house? Oh, well, uh, second thought, I'll probably be drinking just straight soda water. Keeps you younger that way. <laughs> so long. Bye-bye, Roddy. Bye-bye. I wish. Bye. Uh, wonder what would have happened if Sam had been a real parson. One thing would be need a new ramrod. Now you uh, think it's going to turn me in, eh? Of course not. You signed for the whole drive. Hey, you better turn in your collar, Sam. I'm making a honest man out of you. You mean work? Yeah. All the way to Denver. Keep your mouth shut. Hey, Asa, next man opens his face, you close it, you hear? Yes, sir. Judge, I said set. I hear you, and I'm setting. Territory, New Mexico County Union, Circuit Court of Judge John Hogan's now in session. Case? People against Judd Hammerkline this territory. Take your hats off. Charlie, get your hat off. Now, if any of you start talking out of turn out there, or otherwise trying to horn in on, on Judge's conversation, you're gonna find yourself in that water trough out there. Head first. That you ruling, Judge? That's right. Yes, sir. All right, Ephraim, let him in. Right so, John. No, well, let's hear it. Well, there ain't no two ways about it. Judd, you're as guilty as a liquored up Paiute Indian on a Saturday night. What? Oh, you're a you're the you can beat you. There was you're the foreman. What did you let him do it for? It is my fault. Hey, Judge, I'm going to have to call him out. Hey, 
judge says quiet, he wants quiet. All right, Wolski, you can sit down. Defendant, got anything to say before this court passes sentence? John, do you ever know a time when I didn't have something to say? All right, you men. The way you voted, that was the only way. Don't have it on your conscience. I would have done the same thing. All right, so I killed me a man. A lousy little card sharp. He wasn't the first one. Between him and the first time I saw the Apache some 30 years ago, I must have 20, 25 unmarked graves to my credit. Some of them I'm sorry for. I wish it could have been done in another way. Couldn't be. And it couldn't with this lousy card sharp either. Two weeks ago, Monday, there were four hammerclines. Me and my three boys. Two weeks ago, Tuesday, there were three hammerclines. Me and these two kids right here. This lousy card shop. Pull the hide out Derringer and he shot Albie. He's my youngest. He shot him stone cold dead and for what? A lousy six dollar stud pot. So I got my shotgun and I went looking for him. No fair draw, no back to back, no ten paces, nothing. And when I found him, I blew him out of the county. All right. There's no doubt I'm guilty, but so is every man in this room. Because every man in this room, including you, John, would do exactly the same thing. You tell him, Judd. We're behind you all the way. They'll never hang on Judd. Like Judd says, there's no doubt about it. Any one of us probably would have done the same thing. You know why? Because we don't know any better. Thirty years ago, we made our own rules out here because we had to. Twenty years ago, we watched those same rules change this sun-fried hell into a place a man could call home. And ten years ago, even a woman could sleep through a whole night without using a rifle for a pillow. That was then. That was yesterday. Book's closed now, Judge. Chapter, verse, and conscience. Oh, it ain't even... Today we got to face now. It's tomorrow, the day after that. That's right. Back in Boston, they got laws. The same laws that worked for people in St. Louis and Buffalo. Now in Dead Horse. This is tomorrow. It's here now. And we can't sweep it or the law under our rugs. Not anymore. And we've all got to answer to the same law that works for everybody. You, me, even a little white-fingered gambler wearing a shiny black coat and, and carrying a hideout nickel plate pop gun. You killed him, Judd. No matter what he was or what he done, the law says you've got to answer for it. Stand up, Judd. For the willful premeditated murder of uh, uh, Nate Nielsen, occupation gambler, address unknown in the township of Dead Horse. All right, go on, go on, say it, John. We know you're the judge. Territory of New Mexico, you're sentenced to hang by the neck until you're dead. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. John Hogan, you know that gambler had it coming to him. I do not know it. That's for our court to decide. Not you, uh, me, a judge. The law specifically states trial by jury, not by fury. Uh, if you think we're going to stand around and watch you hang our power... Mark, Mark, you just take it easy. You're not talking to John Jefferson Hogan now. You are talking to the law of the land. Sentence will be carried out at 3 o'clock on the 13th. That's Friday next. Asa, both the prisoner and the execution are now your responsibility. 
All right. You're going to have to get yourself another boy. I ain't going to spring that trap on Judd. Nobody else will in Dad Horse. Well, that ain't something a friend can do. I know. I intend to telegraph the territorial governor, ask him to send you a professional. Oh, come on, Asa. Put that piece of tin back on your chest. You look naked without it. Well, you know and I know nobody's going to hang me, professional or otherwise. Now, Judd, I'm giving you... All right, all right, I know. I gave you my word, no trouble. That goes for the boys and everybody else in town. I'll do what the law says. I'll sit in Ace's jail until 3 o'clock on the 13th. By then, Boston law will go back where it belongs. Dead horse will be back to normal, and I'll just go back to my place. Drinks are on me! <laughs> It's all right with you, Your Honor. What's adjourned? All right, look, next time you're in town, come on out to the ranch. We'll fry us a steer. I got some whiskey we can work on, too. Like Jud says, without it, you, you look naked. So you understand it, John. That lawyer's talking about that might work out back in Boston, some of them northern towns, but it ain't gonna work here. Not for judge, and ain't no sentence, no jury, or no scaffold, or no hangman. Gonna make it a bit different. Three o'clock on the 13th. It's your responsibility. always like this? Mm. No. Nope. Can't always find a creek just good. I'll tell you what I might do. I might, uh, I wouldn't do this for anybody else. I, I want you to understand, but I might just step down and let you take over Ramrod. Yeah, I'll tell you, Rowdy. Times I might look like a jackass, but if you think I'm gonna make sounds like one, you're plumb... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. You were saying. Just one more time, Rowdy. Just one more smart mouth out of you. <laughs> what I want to know is, how do you make him sound off at the right time just like that? Oh. Your cousin yonder. Cousin? Hey! Come on, let's not make a foot race out of this. Easy now, boy. Easy, yeah. Just trying 
to find out who you belong to. Stand there, give me a hand. Still alive. Just what do you think you're doing? Well, I'm washing the dishes, just like you said. And what, solid soap? You got enough suds there to wash the spots off every cow in Texas. Mr. Wishbone, you said cleanliness was next to godliness. I also said that wastefulness is worse than sinfulness. Now, dump that stuff and rinse those things off in plain water. But... I said plain water, you hear? But, uh... You heard me, plain water. fever. I cleaned out the wound good, so there shouldn't be any complications, but with the head wounds, you never can tell. I don't get this, boss. Hmm? Hmm? Ah, he's got money, watch, extra food. Doesn't seem to make too much sense. The man's bush worked for a lot of reasons. Robbery's only one of them. Yeah, but why would they go to all the trouble to bury him? Any identification? No, not even a name, nothing. What are you mumbling about? And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. Book of Revelations. Well, look again. Dead men don't breathe. Death is many things to many men, senor. And only death can live in a grave of stones. Jesus, maybe you'd better go back and work on the remuda. Huh? Wishbone will call you if you need. There is no need for help, senor favor. Not for him, and not for the one whose life death has come to claim. Mm. He's coming round. Just rest easy, mister. You're gonna be all right. <laughs> Henrietta. I don't know the lady, mister. My name's Wishbone. Oh. You're not Henrietta. Oh. Who can answer my questions, Nine? Sing 99 and 90. Oh. 
Oh, what is whiter than milk? What is softer than silk? Snow is whiter than milk. The wind is softer than silk. What is louder than a horn? What is sharper than a thorn? Thunder is louder than a horn. And death is sharper than a thorn. Well, he's out again. He must have been hurt worse than I thought. Sick all right. He needs a doctor. Why don't you double back to Fort Collins come first light? There's an army surgeon there. Nothing more we can do here. Well, I heard something at the wagon. I thought you thought. You all right, mister? I, uh, I, uh... Let's get him over where he belongs. Craziest thing I ever heard of. You trying to get up after being hit in the head like that. Well, I... You know, what's the matter? That idiot hurt your neck. No. That's an old injury. One from beyond the grave, you might say. What was you trying to do anyways? Well, I... Well, I thought he was some kind of thief. You told me to watch the wagon and guard it with my life. Well, you aren't going to have any life to guard if you don't stir up that fire and hot up some broth. This man needs food, and he needs it now. Yes, sir, right away. Who are... Who are you? My name's Favor. I'm the trail boss here. There's Wishbone, our cook, that's helping you. That was Mushy of Cook's louse who tackled you. There's Roddy Yates, the ramrod, who found you, and the rest of the crew. There's a cattle drive. Yes, but what? Where? Well, we found you this morning under two feet of rocks. Oh. <laughs> that it wasn't a nightmare. I remember. Just what did happen anyways, uh, Mr. What's your name? Plew. Hannibal H. Plew. Lately of New England, more recently from 
Ellsworth, I think it was, in the state of Kansas. But as for this morning, I can't seem to sort that out. See, I was riding along with Henrietta. Henrietta's my mule. Where is she? With the remuda, senor. Oh, I'm very grateful. Like most innocents, we have developed something of a kinship. About this morning... I was riding along, and then suddenly, something struck me. I have a... I have a blurry memory of rocks being placed on me and the sound of laughter. It's nice and hot, Mr. Wishbone. Ooh. First you try to strangle him, and then you try to scald him to death. It's not really his fault, you know. I, I was trying to take my things from the wagon. Here, let's try to get some of this down where it'll do the most good. You see, being a fervent coward from my earliest recollection, I was trying to slip away without your knowledge. Well, with a head wound like that, it sure don't make much sense. He who has a thousand friends has never a friend to spare, but he who has one enemy will find him everywhere. I evidently found my enemy this morning, and then, see, when I revived, when I came to in your midst, I was afraid that I was renewing my enemy's acquaintance. So I have a little confession to make. You see, I pretended that I was still delirious until I could find a propitious moment to escape. But I see that I evaluated the situation wrong, and I wanted to apologize now for any inconvenience that I may have caused you. Uh, Mr. Plew, about this morning, you got any idea who jumped you? I really haven't the slightest idea. What are you doing out here all by yourself anyway? I have a very pressing engagement in the town of Dead Horse, and because the stage coach transportations only make one trip a month, I, I felt obliged to strike out alone with Henrietta. You was just riding along, and somebody took a shot at you and buried you for no reason at all. Well, no thinking animal acts without reason. And no enemy strikes without a cause. But, gentlemen, in this particular case, neither the reason nor the cause. I understand. Well, it's your problem. Have it your way. You can tell the sheriff it did, or whatever you want. You're going to Dead Horse. That's right. Going to pick up supplies. Till then, you can ride in the supply wagon with Mushy. Oh, that would be splendid, but on one condition. I must be there by the 13th. Today's the 10th. The day after tomorrow, we can get you there in time. Oh, I can't tell you how delighted I am or how delicious this was. Well, I'll see if I can't rustle you up some more. Senor. You quoted from the book of Revelations. It was chapter six, I believe. And I look and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. I ride a white mule, not a white horse. My name is Hannibal, not death. See, fear of the unknown is a vagrant fancy without visible means of support. Or perhaps it is fear of oneself. But you, uh, 
mind some company? No, sir. That's good. It's not that uh, I object to your wagon. It's just that, uh, that the steady diet of that canvas siding makes for monotonous landscape. Well, after last night, I didn't think you'd want to ride with me. Last night is a page that's already turned in the book of memories. It's gone, forgotten, meaningless. Well, to you, maybe, but not to me. When I do something wrong, I just can't forget. You sound like a man who's feeling sorry for himself, sir. Somebody has to. Well, around here, I'm just tanglefoot and mushy, a clown who can't do anything right. Well, even when he does everything right. What I mean? Well, every once in a while, I get sick of it. Get sick of everything. Gaudiamus igetur juvenes dum sumus, post jucundum juventutum. Let us rejoice and be glad, therefore, for the young life ahead of us. Think where we might be today, Mr. Mushkoff, if Columbus had turned away from his curiosity, if the spirit of Don Quixote had been struck down by the turn of the windmill, if Merlin had believed that magic was the sole device of the devil. Merlin? Yes, he was the magician in the court of King Arthur. Surely you've heard about him. The mysteries and the complexities of ledger domain, of the hand that moves quicker than the eye, of the art of the false bottom, of water that runs uphill instead of down, of the miraculous conversion of a hat into a lair for rabbits, of the transformation of something into nothing. Now, that is miracles, most people, but mere tricks to the anointed few. Now, here, here is the... The three of hearts, you see. Watch it. I'm going to place it right there, sir. There they are. Well, where'd it go? Where'd the card go? Here you are, sir. There you are. A mere trick, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, would you, uh, I mean, would you mind showing me that trick, Mr. Plu? On one condition, Mushy. That you call me Hannibal. Mushy, go get my medical kit and build up a fire. Hurry! And we'll set up camp here. Hold up the herd. Right. Uh, settle back, Jesus. Don't move around any more than you have to. We don't want that poison to circulate. Oh, poison can't be stuffed. Any more than death can be stuffed. You make it sound like the Grim Reaper is taking up cattle driving as a hobby, Jesus. Forget it. You're going to be just fine. Sure don't look good. 
It's a fever I don't like. Maybe I'd better double back to Collins, pick up a doctor. No, it's too late for that. Unless something is done right now. Like what? Well, some hot compresses in that arm. Draw it, draw out the poison. And keep him up, keep him moving, moving, moving. Moving? Oh. With that fever? Take another look there, Mr. Wishbone. These are the classic toxic poison symptoms. There's the fever, and the general lassitude, and the gradual collapse of the reflex system. Evidently, the tourniquet and the incision were too late, because that poison is already in the bloodstream. Yeah, but moving him, what good would that do? Well, it'll keep the blood circulating and the poison with it, keep it from localizing until such a time as the toxic effects can be neutralized. Wish? No. I don't like it because I don't understand it. And I don't like it because I don't like being told what to do by a question mark that was dug out of a pile of rocks and he don't even know how he got there. And don't belong out here in the first place. Well, like it or not, it's the only thing to be done. Now, get me some hot water and some compresses, as many as you can find. Quick. quick. Oh. Jesus, can you understand? It's, it's not worthy. Not death, my boy. Not yet. Will you trust me? Do, do I have any choice? No, Jesus. There is no choice. Two cats from Kilkenny. Say it. Who thought there was one cat too many? I say that. One cat too many. One cat too many. Right? Say it. So they fought and they fit. They fought and they fit. They fought and they fit. Right? Say it. And they scratched and they bit. They scratched and they bit. Say it. Take it. Uh, I don't know that one. How about uh, Hickory Dickory Duck? Huh? Come on. Hickory Dickory Duck. Uh, I don't know that one. That's still so good. Mr. Wishbone! Keep talking, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Come on. Until except for their nails and the tip of their tails, instead of two cats, there weren't any. I'm tail. He's a roof snail. Go on, Jesus. Except for their nails and the tip of their tails, instead of two cats, there weren't any. Come on, hey, Susie, the talk or drink. Cats of Kilkenny. Louder, louder. He, he thought there was one cat too many. Ah, louder. So they fought and they fit, and they scratch and they bit. Very good. Till with exception, for the nails and tips of the tails, yeah. there weren't, instead of two cats, there weren't any. There once were two all cats. Right, all right, all right, all right. You can stop now there, Jesus. Fever's broken, honey. All right, all he needs now is a little rest. A little rest? We're carrying him around all night, and he needs rest? Yeah, next thing you know, he'll want breakfast in bed. Yeah, well. No need for concern, gentlemen. By this time tomorrow, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Two hours ago, I wouldn't have given him two minutes, and now... He's fine. It's that simple. About as simple as doing a cartwheel over the North Star. I don't eat crow very often, Hannibal, but I'll sure do it now. Between the cradle and the grave lies but a haircut and a shave. Now, that was no miracle, no cabalistic incantation. A simple application of medical theory. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. Sometimes it don't. We know this much, that when the wheel turns, somebody wins, somebody loses. Yeah, well, you turn your wheel any today, and you're sure gonna come up double aught. Now, that head of yours isn't anywhere near healed, and you've been up all night. Well, healed or not, or tired or not, Henrietta and I must be moving on. You mean now, today? 
My appointment in Dead Horse is still tomorrow, my chief. Well, you don't do something with that head. Your appointment's gonna be with a funeral. Yours. Gee, whatever it is, a day or two won't make any difference. Time is still going. No, my chief. With me, time stands still. I go on. Mr. Faber, I want to tell you how much obliged to you, sir. The man who bushwhacked you, animal. What about him? Ah, nothing to be afraid of in a failure. A wish? Well, I could leave now. I might go with you. Well, if the difference between a birth and a death is only a shave and a haircut, I better get them both in while I can. Mushy. Just hitch up the team. Yes, sir. I'm very grateful to you. It's more the other way around, Hannibal. If you ever want to take up cattle driving, you know where to come. All right. Because if there are any complications with Jesus, why repeat the same procedure, keep him moving, force liquids. Beyond that, of course, no man born of woman can escape his destiny, be it toxic poisoning. Or an unmarked grave on an unmapped trail. You call it destiny. I'm learning not to disagree with you, but uh, it still seems to me it's just a piece of luck. You and Jesus just tell the right cards at the right time. And a good card player knows precisely the right moment to rise up and go home. I thought you said his town was dead and past burying. Looks like it got itself resurrected. Hogan said this hanging's got to go but a book. That means we need a real hanging tree. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> What's going on? They look like a taffy pool. We want any smart mouth. We'll just take in the stage show. Yeah, that's just about what I'm beginning to look like and feel like, friend. A hammer swinging stage show. You'd think these people never saw two boards being nailed together. This is being built for him. At least so uh, old Judge Hogan says. He's up to stretching for three o'clock tomorrow. You see something wrong? This lumber could have been cured longer. Yes, it'll do, it'll do. Where I come from, a man says a hang don't usually wander the streets. Judd ain't wandering, he's going to lunch. You don't think he's gonna take his meals in jail, do you? Yeah, Judd Hammerkline may be a lot of different things, but he's all the same when he comes to his word, and that's what he gave Asa. Asa? Yeah, Tanner, Sheriff Tanner. 
He told him he's going to do just like the judge said. Stay put and not try to break loose, at least until uh, after the time set for the hanging. After the hanging? Well, now, you don't think there's anybody in Dead Horse going to spring a trap on Judd Hammerkline, do you? Well, he not only owns this town, but half the territory. And uh, every second cousin in it. Plus which, he's got a couple of sons and a range crew that don't take no. Not from nobody. Now, Judd ain't gonna hang. Not here, not nowhere. Then why build a scaffold? Uh, you heard what he said. Judd said everything's gotta go by the book. Judge Hogan says he's gonna stay in jail and hang at three sharp tomorrow. And we're gonna do just what the judge says. Except for the hanging. <laughs> Won't do. Never do at all. Just what do you think you're doing? I say it won't do. What won't do? If you men were kind enough to drive me into town, the least I can do is stand you for a round of libations. Libations? That's drinks. Name your own poison, as the saying goes. Like huh? I said, what won't do? What do you think, Mr. Wishbone? Well, the supplies can wait. After you, Hannibal. Yeah, all right. For the last time, what won't do? You think you're some kind of an expert? An expert is one who knows more and more about less and less. I only know one thing that that scaffold might do for hanging laundry, perhaps. But a man, never. Gentlemen, the biggest stakes in the territory. Burn tasty black all the way through. They better be, otherwise I'm going to park your backside on that stove out there. <laughs> all right, belly up, boys. Your drinks are ready. Well, I've seen quieter stampedes. Uh, maybe that's because they weren't so thirsty. Yes, sir. I'll take that. Uh, you take what's put in front of you. <laughs> that don't make sense, Paul. A condemned man's supposed to have a bad appetite. Condemned or not, I'm a grown boy. Gentlemen, you gotta help. Jake. It's him. Can't be. I'm telling you, it's him. You can't be. Sheriff Tanner? Mm -hmm. My name is Plu, Hannibal H. Plu. A Judge Hogan telegraphs the territorial governor for my services. Three o'clock tomorrow, I believe. The near the hanging man. I'm afraid your scaffold won't do. The drop is far too short, and the trap is far too unreliable. I shall need some equipment and some assistance. Oh, Hannibal, why didn't you tell us? Well, 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 why do you know? A real live hangman, right here in Dead Horse. Take a good look, boys. You don't often see a professional man in these parts. Tell me, how many scalps you got in your belt? 10, 20? You know, you don't look like much. But in your profession, looks don't count for much, do they? It's a shame you had to come all this way for nothing. Me, there's nothing I enjoy more than watching a professional man work. But life's full of disappointments, and we gotta live with them. All right, Mark, pay him off. With what? Another 30-30 slug? Who the heck are you, fella? My name's Wishbone. He answers to Mushy. We're with a drive a few miles south. It's to Wishbone. As for Hannibal there, we found him under a pile of rocks. Somebody put him there with a rifle. I said no trouble. I gave my word. Uh, well, I was here in town, Pa. I mean, what happened, that was maybe 20 miles south of here. Uh, maybe somebody's rifle slipped. And that pile of rocks just happened to rain down. <laughs> maybe you'd like some of this in writing. 
The county line, that's as far as my jurisdiction goes. If you got any complaints, why don't you see a federal marshal? All right, all right. It shouldn't have happened, but it did. I'll make it easy by up in the alley. That way nobody gets hurt. Hey, hang on. What'll you take to, uh, to forget what you're here for? The territory's compensation is more than adequate, thank you. All I need from you, sir, is your age, your height, and your weight. Hey, what do you think of that? Billy got beat. Ike Brannon just shot him. Mm. Oh, Bob. That was a great loss, Carl. Billy was like family to me. My own people are a long time gone, so we were more than friends. Did you know that, that I had a son once? Quite remindful of you, Carl, not it. I think on it. Very understanding, even as a boy, and that's a valuable, valuable trait, understanding. I'm sure people have remarked on it in you, haven't they? I bet your father was just as proud of you as... Uh, I don't have it, Carl. I bet everything I had on Billy. I just saved out enough for train fare. That train doesn't leave in the morning. And my brothers will be here in a couple of hours. In Chicago, Springfield Carl. had to do, old man. But nobody here had loaned me any money. We did. Now, we want it back. There it went, Carl. The last chance I had to get it back. And you better find another. Find another? I worked with that boy for almost a year. You ain't got that long this time. You know how my brothers came by that money? They're gonna be in this town just as long as it takes for them to settle. One way or the other. Do you understand that, old man? Sure, Carl. Uh, you better. Buy me a candy apple. Sure, honey.
Hassan. Come on, Hassan. Come on, get up. Let's go. Friday. Saturday, 9 p.m. Springfield. This is Springfield. That's right. After Springfield comes Topeka. After Topeka comes Wichita, Amarillo. Dodge. Dodge. It's always Dodge for Amarillo. Why? We've, um, it's, it's always gone that way before, that's all. I'm tired of Dodge. And I'm tired of Amarillo. And I'm awful tired. I'll go out there. Ike Brandon uh, took Billy Parkland. He wasn't 19 years old, Leroy. Well, that's pop stock system for you. It's all talk. Maybe. Sure it is. Can't tell me a man can predict a gunfight with a look or a trick watch. But Not natural. He's been doing it for a long time. I don't make it right. Makes no difference to him what happens to other men. Cost me $10. Almost had me fooled, Leroy. I actually thought it was Billy Partland you were feeling sorry about. Well, it's not ten dollars. Of course I feel sorry for the kid. Getting mixed up with that old sharper. It's just too green, that's all. Come on. Since when isn't that the name of the game? Rush him, hustle him, keep him off balance, and shove him out in the street against Ike Brandon. Roston Ware. Find it works enough to make a man give up shaving. Maybe drinking, huh? <clears throat> Made us out of town so full of herds. Wouldn't do to get all liquored up. Besides, we'll probably have us some work to do. I just have one for Billy. Same order as before. Shaw first, then Tories, and Yates. And good luck to all of you. And remember now, you can be quicker in a flash flood, but if you don't hit them feathers up there, all you'll take home from this shooting match is a pocket full of empty cartridge casings. <laughs> <laughs> well, go to it. I never thought I would make it this far, Rody. Uh, you're doing great. Don't get shaky now. Well, I'm not uh, shaky. <laughs> My hand is shaky. <laughs> but I am perfectly calm. Can't beat that. You're going to be riding drag for the next 10 drives. Let your gun come to a complete stop before you fire. Come 
watch our boys do some shooting. Hey, Mush, this is Fred Holt. Runs feed store. Hey, hey just watch this. This is Roddy Yates. He's a good one, too. Watch him. Two hits for Torres, and Yates up. shooting match, Rowdy Yates. Ah, now, it's real gold, and it's got the name and the date of our fair city on it already. And Rowdy, if you care to, you can have your name put on it, too, unless you're going to sell it. <laughs> All right, folks, I want you to remember the name of the man that put up this prize, Harry Simpson, down at the Nugget. He's down there waiting for you, and I thank you, and here you are. Yeah! Look at that, isn't that a beauty? Hey, I'll tell you what I do for you, Rowdy. I put your name on this watch. It says, Rowdy Yates from Ernie Torres. And I pay for it, too. Your name, too. Hey, I'd like to get in on that myself. Maybe Mr. Favor will when he gets back tomorrow. Me too, Mr. Rowdy, if they don't use my real first name. Rowdy Yates! You need more friends like Custer needed Indians, but this pretty little girl here wanted me to introduce her. Well, hey, would you excuse us first? We're gonna be late to the Grease Pig Contest. I'm gonna enter old Mushy. Uh, when you're through there, drop by drums. Be my pleasure to buy you all a drink. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Pony. Ah. I saw you. Very good. Thank you. I saw you, too, and I gotta say the same. Oh, oh, this here is, uh, Ernie Torres. My name is Pop Stark. Stark. I heard the talk about engraving names on your watch. I think I might have a little idea for you. Uh, this was given me by one of my best friends. It's got his name on a fob here. Thought maybe your friends might like to get one like it for your watch. Buffalo Bill. Is that what it says? This is to my good friend and advisor, Patty. Patty is? Patty is Stark. Hey, I've heard of him, Robbie. William Cody, huh? He's yeah. very famous. Oh, well, so is Mr. Stark. I suppose so. Ooh, what kind of a watch is this? Well, Rowdy, I don't think our lady friend here would be very interested in this men's talk. She'd probably rather meet us down at Mr. Drum's saloon later. Then bring your friends. Well, see you soon, dear. A fine girl. I have to see that you get better acquainted with her. Oh, definitely. <laughs> oh, you like my old watch, huh? Yeah. Well, tell me something. Does it uh, keep the time of day? <laughs> no, Roddy. This is what they call a stopwatch. Now, this little knob here lets me start it and stop it whenever I want to. It measures time in fractions of a second. Well, why do you do that? I use it in my work. Yeah. Let me show you. Now, let's see here. We've got Bill Hickok, Billy Body, Austin Ware, Wyatt Earp, and yes, sir, here we are, Rowdy Yates. I just made these notations. You see these figures here? Tells exactly how fast you are. I timed you with a stopwatch right here. Tells me which hand you use, the weight, the make, the barrel length of your gun, your mannerisms, your temperament, what kind of mistakes you're likely to make. Just about everything I'd need to know about you for now. Yeah, why write about me? That's a good question, son. It indicates modesty. Now, right, you come along. Let's go on down to the saloon. I'll tell you about it. I'm again noticing that every one of these small towns had its own gun slick. You know, not men with reputations, but local boys that were just a whisker faster than the others. And I'd see shooting matches like the one you fellas were in and be amazed at the amount of money that people were willing to gamble on. Yeah, well, I guess our boys had a few dollars riding on us, Ernie. Yeah. Now, they were more fortunate than most. And as your pop Stark, it's never a sure thing. But I've got the knowledge, the experience, and the book. Here, let's have some peanuts. All right, I'll buy it. I guess I was wondering. Oh, no, wait, it's on no, me. Come on, I got come it. Come right on, here. it's on. Got it right here. All right, all right, I won't argue with you. 
Here you go, boys. Go around here. I can watch a man for five minutes, time him once or twice, tell you exactly what he's going to do in a match. I've been doing it almost all my life, and that, my boy, takes us back some time, roughly, to Genesis Book One. <laughs> well, you'd be a tough man to bet against, Mr. Stark. Well, there's no need to when we can both be on the same side. Now, can you imagine the kind of money that we could pick up moving from place to place, taking on these small down gunnies? No, I can't say I could. With your speed, my boy, and my book, we can make $10,000 a year. What? Start sounding a little interesting now, doesn't it? Or are you boys already making more than that? A lot of money. Ten thousand dollars? I suppose when you're used to trail pay, that does sound like a lot of money. But then this calls for brains and ability. Almost any man can push cows, Rowdy. Well, I wouldn't say that. Not that there's anything wrong with driving cattle. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody. Now let me let me put it to you this way. If you fellas had your choice, which would you rather do? Ride point or ride drag? Oh, point. Point. Sure you would. Sure you would. It's yeah, bloody and dirty and dusty up there. I know about these things. Believe me, no man with the sense that the good Lord gave him would ride drag if he had a choice. But you take point. Yes, sir, there you are up in front of everything. The air is clean and you're in charge. You're a leader up there. Maybe more dangerous up in front of a spooky herd, but it's well worth it, isn't it? Oh, can't argue with that. Let's get us some cider and wash these peanuts down. Mm, I'll get it. Fred, a little cider, please. Oh, it's like... Anything you do in this life, Roddy. Yeah, on the one hand, you have the men that are perfectly content getting up off the hard ground every morning before the sun comes up, eating white dust all day, maybe sleeping in the rain all night. There's some fellas that are actually happy doing that. Maybe that's all they're suited for. But I honestly believe that once in a while you run into a man whose life is wasted as a drover. This lad has what it takes to be a leader. He ought to be up there in front of the herd. I honestly think that he ought to have the opportunity to be governor or even president of this great land if he can make it. Roddy's already ramrod. Soon he'll have his own outfit. But I know what you say is true, Mr. Stark. Rowdy is better than to be drover always. We're all of us put here on this earth for a reason and a purpose. Would you agree to that? Uh, if a man has a good mind, and he's compassionate and understanding. It may be that he's meant to be a doctor. It would be selfish, actually, a crime against nature if such a man was wasted on a menial task. Am I right? Yeah, yeah I guess so. All right, you might laugh. You might laugh at what I'm going to tell you. But it's my opinion that this country needs heroes just as much as it needs governors or doctors or judges. If you look back through history, you'll find that it is full of strong, heroic men. They, they give the people somebody to look up to, something to hope for. Yes, sir, I believe you may be such a man, Rowdy. Hero? Sir. Hey, maybe he's right. All the men in the outfit, they look up to you, Rowdy. Mr. Stark, just what are you selling anyway? Well, son, I suppose that I'm trying to sell you to yourself. You're trying to tell me that if I traveled around from town to town to enter in these shooting contests, I'd be some sort of hero? I can tell it by nature you're a modest man, Rowdy Yates. So I know it's hard for you to accept, but let me ask you this. Would you consider Buffalo Bill Cody a hero? Yes. Yeah, sure I do. Fine. I'll tell you something else. You are faster with a handgun than Cody ever was. <laughs> oh, come on. It's all right here in the book. Time, dates, places, even the weather. When we get started, people are going to pay good money to see you handle that gun, and it'll be worth every penny of it. We'll give them a show, won't we, son? <laughs> you tell them like it's already decided. You know, I'm not too sure I want to be a hero just yet. You will. I'd bet everything I have on it. Didn't I promise to buy us a drink? What are we standing out here for? Trouble holding your table for you. It's gonna be a busy two days. Must be 20,000 head of cattle now. We're not drinking. Oh? 
It's going to be a working day, Austin. Take the bottle. Uh, I, I think I'll leave it. Uh, while you were at breakfast, I uh, went over to Dawson's. There was this big, loudmouth fellow there. He was wearing a gun tied down low. I asked Dawson about him, and as uh, near as we can figure, he just in with one of the herds. Kind of looked like a gun. I think I uh, probably be able to push him in. Just take care of him. All right. Um, say, Austin, I, I was doing some figuring. After we pay the room rent and uh, the saloon, we've got almost ninety dollars. Fine. I'm forty-two years old, and I got ninety dollars. Excuse me, Leroy. I got half the ninety dollars. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. Hey, boy, I had an idea I'd find in you. How you doing? Fine, fine. I'd like you to meet a couple of friends of mine, Rowdy Yates, Ernie Torres. They just came in town. It's Leroy Mean. Hey. Hey. Leroy, uh, well, you and me have a little game. All right. All right. Rowdy, you boys join that pretty girl we promised to meet in here. I'll be right with you. All right. See you. Hey, I thought you forgot about me. Never. Show me a gold watch, you big, famous man. Hmm, pretty. Why don't you put your name on it and give it to me to remember you by? Oh, sure, sure. Sorry, boss. Too bad about Billy. Gonna do it yourself now. This might surprise you, Leroy. I think I'll stay away from gunfighting altogether. Well, oh. that does come as a surprise. I'm just getting too old to watch these youngsters come and go like that. And I'm not getting any younger myself. <laughs> you can take that youngster came in here with me. I was uh, gonna ask you about it, Pop. Thought at first you'd already found yourself a new gun. Uh, nothing like that. Not so soon after Billy. Anyway, I don't think he'd have what it takes. It's a shame. Oh, he's willing enough, he says, but I don't know, Leroy. No experience. Uh, you ought to be able to help him get that. Uh, I mean, if you uh, weren't going to give it up. In time, maybe. In time. He looks, uh, looks young enough, Bob. Maybe you ought to take the time. You know, I'd keep him away from hustlers like you long enough to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> nice looking boy, Bob. Yeah. Never been in a shooting, you say, huh? No, he's just like all those trailed youngsters grew up shooting at bean cans and gophers. Oh, he thinks he's pretty good. He came right up to me, asked me what I could do for him. Came right up and asked you. And uh, probably heard of you somewhere. Probably. Suppose he knows about Billy Partland? Uh, well, I hope not, Leroy. I hate to admit this, especially to you, but I was wrong about Billy. Didn't have it, huh? Oh, well, first couple of times he came up against boys in his own class, but I overmatched him with Ike Brannan. Well, it'd be just like putting Rowdy there up against Austin. I know what you mean. Spot this for me, Leroy. Yeah, at one time, uh, that's you said about Rowdy and Austin. One time, that'd have been true, but, uh, Pop, don't uh, talk it around, but Austin hasn't been feeling too good lately. He's, uh, on the bottom. Still probably better than most. I couldn't honestly say so. <laughs> Not these days. <laughs> Hard to believe. Well, I'll tell you what. I'd hesitate to put money on him. Even, uh, even opposite that uh, young fellow of yours over there. 
Yeah, not much chance of that. Nice shot, Lee boy. Thanks. Would be kind of interesting, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Pop? Huh? Ah, come on, it's old friends. What do you really think? Oh, I don't know. I'd have to have pretty good odds. Austin's had 30 fights. Oh, Pop, you know better than that. Nine, maybe ten. Couldn't call them all real fights anyhow. I'd make it about ten to one. Ten to one? <laughs> Pop, I always thought you were a pretty good handicapper. But you're uh, way out of line here. Looks more like uh, even money to me. Maybe uh, six to five. Shoot, Leroy, it wouldn't pay me to find a new boy at those prices. That's it. Fine boy. Five to one. Pop, that's just not good business. I'd have to be out of my head to give you odds like that. All right, Leroy, three to one. Now, that's it. Owe it to the boy to get him the best deal I can. Well, I'll have to have a talk to your boy. No need in that. He talks just like the rest of them. Then we walk into mine. Rowdy! Come here a minute, young fella. <laughs> you look after uh, my watch. Okay, Rowdy. Howdy. Pop here tells me you've had yourself a few gunfights. Now, Leroy. Uh, no, I've handled guns all my life. You see, Leroy, uh, Mr. Means thought he recognized you from Texas. Did you ever hear of uh, Austin Ware? Oh, sure, yeah, I've heard the name. He's got quite a reputation, hasn't he? Yeah, as a gunfighter. Rowdy, boy, we're sorry to take you away from you, friend. That you run on back over there, I'll join you in a moment. Right. Oh, that's beautiful. Let me see it. Yeah, no, no one can touch it. So... Well, you kind of giving yourself a little edge there, aren't you, Leroy? <laughs> yeah, I had to find out. So? Three to one. What about money? That misfortune of Billy took most everything I had, but I'll see what I can do. I should say you'd be able to get enough side bets to make it worth your time, though. But, uh, when are you going to tell your boy? Leroy, there is no sense in making him nervous just yet. Now, I got a lot of things I got to do. I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Found us some work. I saw you talking to Stark. The tall one with the girl and the Mexican. That's the one. We shouldn't have too much trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna go get our money working. Be back in ten minutes. Me. Yeah, I'm sure of that, huh? Besides, they're too old and they don't use perfume. And also, they probably will try to spend all of you money. Uh-oh. How about that, Ernie? <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you just stay here? Who's that fellow sitting over there behind you? Against the wall there? Keep staring over this way. That's Austin Well, He's a gunfighter. Yeah. Mm. So Mr. Stark's book. Yeah, I know. I, I just wondered why he was staring at me. Is he a friend of yours? So, so. I don't think he's looking at me, though. Yes. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> at least I don't owe him any money, fortunately. What do you think, Ernie? Uh, you think uh, we ought to stay around here? I, uh, I think so, yes. Looks like it's the only way I'm going to get this watch back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how did 
does Roddy get mixed up in these things? I wish Mr. Favor was here. Well, he ain't, so I hope Roddy will listen to you. Me? You don't know Roddy. He don't hold with being told what to do. It's got to come from somebody he has to listen to. Like the sheriff. The whole town's full of herds and cowboys, and the sheriff's out of town. Well, we'll have to do the best we can. The hotel. The sheriff sometimes holds up at the hotel when you don't want to be found. Good. You go get him, and I'll go in. No, Roddy, no right off what I was up to. I'll go get the sheriff. You go on over to Drums. Try room number five, second floor. Come in. There's going to be trouble down at Drums. Hey, come here. There's going to be trouble down at Drums. What kind? Oh, well, come on with me. I'll tell you on the way. Tell me here. It's always trouble. Sometimes it's worth getting up for, and sometimes it ain't. Well, there's going to be a shooting. Yeah, a gunfight. So? You already know about it. Well, I'm the sheriff. Well, when are you going to do something about it? You want to do something? Go ahead. You got maybe ten minutes. Take old Pop at least that long dig up betting money. Not going to be easy with his reputation. Already owes Carl Hatcher more than he can scrape up. You mean you're not going to do anything about it? Sure I am. I'm going to sit right here and see it's run fair and square. Fair and... What kind of a sheriff are you? How will you know this new fella? Well enough, why? Relative? That why you're making so much of it? Oh, he works with our outfit. That fella Stark saw him at the shooting match. Rowdy won it. He won it? Yeah. He didn't tell me that. Changes things some. Let me ask you something. Don't it seem to you three to one is long odds against a kid can shoot that good? What? Clyde. Hey, Clyde. Hmm. Look, I changed my mind. Get over to drums and lay off ten on that kid. Hurry up now. We ain't got much time. Oh. And then? Then maybe I will be a hero, too, with $10,000. And then he watches. Mr. Stark, he can do these things. He has the book. Well, what? You, you don't want to talk while we wait for Rowdy? Oh, sure. Sure we can talk. We'll talk about payday. You spend all or save up? Well, uh... How much trail wages do you have left? Good for you. You can afford to buy a lady a drink. Maybe two. Is Roddy in here with you? He invited Roddy for a drink. That's Austin Ware. Pony. and everything's all right as long as they're just sitting and talking. You go busting in, you might uh, spook them. I don't know. I think I ought to break it up before it's too late. Believe me, Wish. Austin wears no saloon gun. He won't start anything in here. Uh, now, you come on with me to the bar. Uh, you can keep an eye on him from there. Come on, now. Oh, uh, since then, whenever I come to town, he has a bottle set aside for me. Hope you like it. How old is he? Yeah, tastes fine. Well, it ain't cut too much, and... Uh, wasn't still on the corn cob this morning. See you talking to Pop Stark and Leroy. They putting something together, you think? No, is he a friend of yours, Leroy? Yeah, in a way. Well, anyway, we've known each other a long time. How do you happen to be talking to you? Oh, he's got, uh, he's got the idea I'm a gunfighter. How about that? And what did you tell him? That I wasn't. As good answer as any. Is it true? Yeah. Yeah, why shouldn't it be? You don't come right out and say much, do you? Well, would you call me over to hear me say? Nothing. Just curious, I guess. Doesn't have anything to do with uh, that shooting match here in town, does it? It was a good one. Yeah, it was all right. I don't get out much to keep track of things like I used to. I spend most of my time in the hotel. Right here. 
You beaten up against anybody I know? How many of my old friends you outdraw so far? I like to keep track. You think, you think I'm a good fighter, too? And you're not. No, I'm not. And I'm the Reverend Abernathy. Tell me, how many, uh, how many people ask you about all the shootings you've been in, Reverend? Pretty near everybody. I used to keep track once. Used to make a difference, I guess. 24 years ago. But not now, huh? I got no reason to want to remember. You know, a while back in uh, some other town, a lady came up to me and said I shot her boy. It was in El Paso two years ago, she said, and she... she'd seen it. Well, I stopped to think, tried to remember Paso, and this kid came to mind. I could remember how he was dressed, the way he looked, everything. So I told her. She just looked at me and said, no, that wasn't the way he looked at all. Funny. Anyhow, sometime later, I was sitting in a hotel with Leroy telling him about it and describing this kid that kept coming to my mind. He had light color eyes, too. Well, Leroy said I was thinking of Deanie Foster. Deanie Foster. It's the first man I ever killed. Now they all look like him. What are you doing with that shooting match? Just keeping your hand in? No, no. Several of us thought we'd give it a try. You win yourself a watch? Mm-hmm. Let's have a look. Slow. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time since I had one of these. I can never hold on to mine long enough to wear one out. I need money or meet a pretty girl. Yeah, must have 15, 20. You any better at hanging on to them? Well, I've had that one a little over an hour and I still own it. <laughs> I'd give that little girl you were talking to over there about 10 minutes more and... What's the name of that fellow at the bar watching us? Wearing whiskers. Oh, oh that's a wishbone. He's our cook. No, I don't get a chance to talk to most of the fellows that I am. Uh... Well, I, I don't talk to many people. Yeah, well, I guess you can't really afford to let your guard down. You don't do it twice. Let me see your hand. Right. Just put it out, either one of them, don't matter. You're right-handed. Yeah, that's right. Notice the way you wear your gun. It's your right hand, there's your gun. Yeah. Most men sitting across the table from me wouldn't give me that much of an edge. Unless they were awful fast and awful sure. Oh. I guess I got my answer. Oh, Leroy, what are you doing to me in my old age? Uh, you, here, have, you better have a drink. No. I'm regretting a few already. That? It's just part of the whole parcel. Hotel rooms, corner chairs and saloons, new faces. It was an old idea. A leather pouch for my hand. What happened? Gunfight? What else? You don't sound like you like it too much. Why don't you quit? 
There's a lot that's different about you, boy, but not your questions. Well, being as you didn't uh, call me over here to hear me ask a lot of questions, why don't you just go ahead and tell me, huh? First, I'll tell you what you just asked me. You don't quit. Ever. Because they won't let you just walk away. The bone pickers won't. Bone pickers? Them. Pop Stark and Leroy and you. Me? There's only one way to best it. And it won't be easy. But both of us know how to handle a gun. And the worst thing that can happen is one of us gets his leg set. And them. They're satisfied. They've had their shooting. What are you talking about? I'm saying that when you and me go out into that street, we've got to agree that there'll be no shooting above the knees. Like so. Look, uh, Mr. Ware, you've got the wrong man. Listen, boy, I know. Believe me, I know. Kids, lie down, everybody. I got something to say. As most of you already know, Austin Ware, Rowdy Yates, are calling each other out. Let me have you watch for loud. My man, Rowdy, is ready right now. If everybody else is. The drover hadn't got a chance. Alan, bet for me. Now, we all know Austin Ware's reputation. So we all know what kind of pure nerve it takes to call him out. There's one thing in the world this boy mine's got. It is pure nerve. That's about all there is to it, gents. Wish them both luck. Find yourself places outside. All right, Big Mouse, get out there and break this up right now. Somebody get rid of him. Stay out of this wish. Look, Mr. Stark, is this your idea, this shooting match? What are you saying, Roddy? You don't want to go through with it now? You know this isn't what we talked about. This is exactly what we were talking about, son. Are you telling me that you're afraid after all the talking you did? No, I'm not saying that, but... Good. Because I never for a minute picked you as yellow. Come on, son, you're going to be fine. Now, wait just a minute. Oh, oh, oh my... Is that money? Yeah, some. I bet it like you said. If you take this wash to Sonny Willis, he'll give you $50 for it. You put it with what you already have. <laughs> hey, if Rowdy's all right, I think I'll just skedaddle, Wish. Some of them might not take too kindly to my help. Yeah, all right, Fred, you go on. Sorry, Rowdy. I didn't know what you was going to do, and I couldn't take any chances. So you weren't about to let me get out of it, would they, Wish? Bone pickers. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks. Thanks, Wish. Mr. Favorite skinned me alive if I let you get shot up. You mind telling me what you hit me with? Yes, sir. It takes a brave man. Everybody wishes you luck, Ernie. You too, Austin. Gentlemen, bets are still on. Good, good. Who's the kid? Don't know. Came in second in the fast draw. Any bets? Look, Ernie, don't get stampeded into this thing. You're in way over your head. I am not scared. Now, just leave me alone. Eh? Listen to him, Ernie. Austin Ware's a professional. Look, this isn't a fair fight. You won't have one chance in ten. Fair? You, you think everything has to be fair. If it was, you, you think they let me try? One chance in ten, I take it. It is the only chance I have. It is important for me. You can't buy what you want with a gun? How do you know what I want? You would be very surprised if I tell you, because what I want is what you always have. I want men to trust me and to ask me questions how to do things. And, and, and to laugh when I say a joke. And to call me by my name. And I want women to sit and, and, and look at me. And I want some men to, to ask me to be a hero. And to make $10,000. And I want to feel big enough inside not to need to be a hero. That is what I want. But I will settle for as much of that as I can get for this. Now, please, 
don't talk to me anymore. I'm not scared. I know you fellas mean well, but you're just getting nervous, and you don't want that, do you? That boy's got no business out on that street. There is nothing I can do to stop it now. Everybody's out there waiting. Well, if a killing's what they want, I'll oblige him right here. You don't mean that, son. I just give the people what they want. Yeah, well, what you're dealing in isn't yours to give, old man. Trust me. I guarantee you it'll turn out just the way it's supposed to. And don't be concerned about your friend. It's not just Ernie. Neither one of those men want to go out there. One's already seen too much killing, the other doesn't even know what it's all about. And I'm calling a halt to this thing Jake, right now. Jake! Jake! Keep that gun on him, Jake. Hey, Roy. You and Austin go on outside. We'll be right with you. I tried to tell him. There's only one way to beat him. Sorry, Drover. Why weren't you around 24 years ago? I guess you fellas, so don't start any trouble. You say when. One way to grease a wheel. How much you make in this place? Uh, I don't know exactly. Come on, come on, how much? Uh, besides, uh, I'd have to go work somewhere else. Come on, hurry up. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. The, the boss, you know, he... Anything like it. Well, it was almost like he let Ernie take the first shot. He was standing there just like it wasn't a gunfight at all. He never even went for his gun. That's right, he never did drill. <laughs> Darnest thing I ever saw. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pop! Pop, I bet it like you said. How could he lose? What went wrong? I don't know. Austin never made a move. What do you do now, Stock? They're always talking about the next one. They always will. I'm getting out of here. See, son, aren't you sorry you didn't trust the old man? Would you like to hear something interesting, Ronnie? Do you know that if you invited Taurus out right now, do you know that most of these people would bet on him instead of you? It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, we know, in fact, that Taurus couldn't possibly beat you. A fortunes have been made in situations like these. I know, I've done it. It's all right here in the book. All right, be careful with that, son. That's very valuable information in there. Wait a minute, Rowdy. Let me have that, son. Let, let me have that back.